Welcome to the show. I'm your host, Brad the Bard, and today I have the man from Syracuse, New York, the MMA guy, the BJJ guy. Everyone knows, everyone seems to love Sam McCallie. And before we get started, I just want to give a giant shout out to our sponsor today. If you guys like horror, creative like writing, and sci-fi, check out Vidinian's stuff in the description. Awesome. One more gigantic shout out to the guys over at Studio 84 for letting us film here. Welcome to the show, my man. How's it going? Very good, actually. It's good to be here. Hell yeah, man. So, Sam, you have a crazy big event coming up here. I do. I do. It's turning out to be just that. It's uh, it's blowing up. Now I'm just trying to make sure I can keep up with it. You know? Yeah. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's going. That goes? It's, it's, it's moving so fast now. I just have to make sure I can keep up with it, you know? Hell yeah, man. So what gave you the idea to start your own competition series? So... <clears throat> uh, I worked for the Global Grappling League. Yeah. Um, I founded the Global Gra- Gla- the Global Grappling League Sub Only Invitational. Yeah. And uh, um, I had a few really good shows in upstate New York. I it was not all that long after I started really doing jujitsu, to be honest with you. And I was a white belt in like promoting too. You know what I mean? And uh, and over time, I I acquired good contacts and. Um, put on some really good shows including uh like i believe it was nikki's first pro tournament he was in uh it was it was my my first global grappling league sub only invitational um the second event that i had i had ethan crellinston on and um he ended up winning a stacked 155 pound tourney yeah and these are just like small in gym shows you know minimal audience you know and they slowly but surely got a little bit bigger each time and you know, it didn't get very big, but for a small in gym show that was made on essentially nothing but a social media platform and a cell phone. Yeah. And that's all it was. And I didn't have a budget. They didn't give me any money to work with or anything yeah. like that, you know. Um <clears throat> nothing against Global Grappling League. They didn't have the money yeah. to really do yeah. it, you know. Uh but um yeah, I I've ended up putting together a really good show that kinda gave me got me a lot of Got, a, got me a lot of views. Yeah, yeah it gave me some credibility. Uh, kind of helped me build up a reputation. I uh, uh, had Nikki Ryan and Marvin Costell as like the main event. J.M. Holland and Ethan Crellinston in like uh, their their best two out of three rematch essentially. Uh, after J.M. had tapped Ethan, Ethan um, ended up beating uh, J.M. on my uh, event. Interesting. And it was it was yeah. it was it was awesome. Just the show. Like everybody was. Everybody was so cool. Eddie Bravo ended up flying out because oh, he shit, was coaching dude. Marvin Castell. Uh, so he put on like the he put on the rules meeting, and it was it was just a stand up. It was like Eddie Bravo a fifteen was minute. The rules yeah, meeting? it was like a fifteen minute half hour stand up. Like he was joking he just, the whole time. Oh, he was just messing around <laughs> the whole time. He just started amazing. telling stories and That's stuff. So funny. It was so cool. It was really really cool experience. And um, uh, Gordon Ryan and Gary Tonin and. Uh, like the squad came up pretty much in full force uh, to uh, coach Nikki Ryan and the other competitors from the team on the show, including like Damian Anderson and Ethan. Like I had said, uh, there's there's a few others too. I couldn't I couldn't even remember it was so long ago. Um, had uh, a, a stacked like blue I think it was a blue belt a blue belt 170 pound tournament too with the event and uh, it was just really successful event. It turned out awesome. Uh, and gained a lot of traction, right? Uh, after that, I think I put on a couple more events down in the same location uh, that um, Jason Rao ended up coming up for, winning one of them, and um, an absolute, that's right, an absolute as well, and Jason ended up taking that one. So yeah. you get uh, a little bit tougher of a time doing it, you know, but I, I remember uh, in the one the one in the last one I had in Ithaca that Jason had won, we had a slew of just really, really good guys, up and comers and everything yeah, too. Dude. You know? So and how do you how do you have the connections to, to reach out to all these guys, man? It seems you know like you're, you're you're popping off all the big names that I know. <laughs> so, uh, you know, it was it was in the beginning. Um, I got a hold of I can't remember who it was. I th- I, I want to say it was John Callistine and mm-hmm. Nikki Ryan and started talking with them and that led me to just more and more people in in their whole scene right in circle and uh their whole team and after like the first show 
uh, they were like, oh, you know, come back. You know, you're welcome down to the city whenever you want. I was like, oh, yeah. I was like, all right, well, I'll follow you guys back down, actually. I'll come right down right now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I ended up go down and going down and staying for a weekend. And um, um, one thing led to another. I ended up going down there and staying for a month. Oh, and, man. You know what That's I mean? Like, I just start, <laughs> I, and I, I started training there for a while. So I got to know everybody well. Competed with a lot of people on the team. I those uh, at the, the school I was at, the only school I was at for a little while, straight, like actual straight jujitsu school that focused on grappling instead of just like MMA. You know, yeah, and, wrestling, and you, you, know? you had your start in MMA, right? Yes, I did. Yeah. 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 How I, long were you doing MMA before you did BJJ? Uh, like a year and a half, oh, uh, nice. almost two years, right around there. Um, <laughs> I had no jujitsu. Like people say, oh, I had bad jujitsu, and I, no, my jujitsu was non-existent, pretty yeah. much. Right. Um, I had, you know, crappy, scrappy wrestling, mm -hmm. and that was about it for the ground game, right? <clears throat> and my goal was just to stay on the feet and, or just stay on top of you and just punch. You know, yeah, I, yeah. I had a super elementary. It was I took my first fight after like two months of training. Yeah. So I didn't have a whole lot of time Damn, to develop dude. or even yeah. learn That's how to do. That's two months. Well, I, I was just with a team of old school wrestlers. And yeah. Just eh, just throw you in just there. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> yeah. Hey, you want to spar this week? This is after I was just a general public guy. I didn't yeah. even. I didn't even want to fight. I didn't yeah. hadn't even heard of jujitsu at that point, really, um, except for like on on UFC events. Yeah. You know, it's like, oh man, you got him with a kimura. Yeah, what, what the hell is a kimura, <laughs> right? No, I, I ended up going to the gym, Ultimate Athletics, and um, uh, it's a gym that I still teach at now. That's awesome. Uh, it's man. an MMA gym. Mm -hmm. Really, is like an MMA gym. Now it's something totally different, but. Um, yeah, I started taking general public classes and doing private sessions with Mark Gervais, who's a, a genius instructor, uh, uh, strength and conditioning instructor and stuff. Nice. Also a black belt in jiu-jitsu and um, uh, re really awesome guy all around. But uh, I started doing privates with him and I fell in love like immediately, obviously. I was like, oh, this is great. I still didn't think I was going to fight or anything. And, uh, a couple weeks in, uh, one of the coaches, Tim Boda, <laughs> old school wrestling guy, just hard nose old school wrestling guy um, uh, was like, hey, hop in the cage, we need you for sparring rounds and stuff, you know? And I, I don't know, I, I I didn't do particularly well, I don't think, I don't even, yeah. I don't remember, but I feel like I did not do that well. Yeah. <laughs> and he's like, oh, well, you should fight. You should definitely compete, you should fight. I was like, uh, all right, all right the sure. So in the ring. He's yeah, like, right. You have enough of it. Probably, right? <laughs> he's like, he's like, uh, he's like, yeah, you should do it, you should do it. He's like, you should fight in like a month. Or two, awesome. like a, two months or something like that. I was like, all right, what, whatever. Why <laughs> not? You already lined it up. Why not, right? <laughs> I ended up training. Like It became like a regular thing. It became a huge part of my life and kind of took over everything else. Um, I did a lot, of, a lot of MMA and a lot of striking, a lot of striking yeah. over like the first two years. And you had – how many like amateur fights did you have? Like you, I had you like had, five fights yeah. in those two years. Um, it just in the first two? In the first two years of my Damn, training, dude. yeah. yeah. <clears throat> and um, – and then I, <laughs> and then I had gotten tapped out, and I was just beating the shit out of this guy the whole fight. I had to be like that, whatever. Oh, it doesn't. Mm -hmm. It really doesn't matter, yeah. right? If you lose anyway. Yeah. Right? And he, he uh, caught me in an armbar, and I was like, "Fuck, dude, I'm sick of not knowing jujitsu." I started getting interested in jujitsu, and um, I was just tough. So the, the instructor that was there at the time that he was, he had come and gone. One of those floozy kind of instructors. Mm -hmm. um, that come in and out, you know what I mean? It, he yeah. bounced around some places, then he finally opened up his own spot where, you know, he now he's all sat and all that, but um, he kind of just gave me my blue belt at the time, uh, like probably a year and a half, two years in, mm. uh, just because I was more physical and athletic than the guys that he, his blue and purple belts at the time. Really. Yeah. And I was kind of beaten up on him, and I think he just didn't like that. I was mm. not a blue belt yet. Yeah. I did not deserve that blue belt, man. Mm. <laughs> I mean, what, what, one and a half, two years, that's like the normal time. Oh, yeah, but I didn't know jujitsu still. Because oh, I didn't man. do jujitsu. Yeah. I didn't. I just oh, you didn't were doing do, MMA for two yeah, years. Yeah, yeah. I didn't do <laughs> jujitsu. <laughs> I got an extremely, extremely elementary, like, like very basic uh, game. I wouldn't even yeah. say fundamental, because I didn't even have the fundamentals. Yeah. But anyways, so um, I, I lost... Uh, a fight against my a good friend and ended up becoming a good training partner of mine, Brandon Warren. Um, I lost the fight against him. He got I got choked out. That was my first loss. I was like, oh, okay, that sucks. Jiu-jitsu's a thing, you know? <laughs> it's just, I had never felt that kind of dominance on the ground, you mm -hmm. know? And especially with the aggression behind it and stuff. Yeah. And the actual MMA fights Where just different. Where you came from, yeah. Right, it's, it's just different, you know? And um, and uh, I, I had, again, like I said, I got armbarred after that, and I was like, all right, that's it. You know, I... 
I was like, I'm gonna just train jujitsu essentially. Um, and I started tr just training jujitsu there, and the coach left, like I was saying, he's in and out kind of guy, right? Uh, he just left, and I had no jujitsu, and the gym moved, and this and that, yada yada. I took like a whole year off. Um, so for about a full year, I did nothing but work. I didn't, I didn't step foot back in a gym, mm. and then I came back to another gym in our area. Um, it's just like a crazy self-defense kind of gym. No competitors out of there. The only competitors out of there would have been competitors anywhere kind of guys. You yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. Um, like they had they weren't yeah, yeah, it weren't. Yeah, it has nothing to do with the, the gym, place they yeah. are, you know. Um, and uh, um, they, uh, they I, I was there for a while. They didn't really facilitate competition or anything like that. I learned some jujitsu. I learned some fundamentals. They uh, did pretty good there. I was under uh, Ben Tolini. Learned a lot from uh, Ben Tolini. If you guys have a chance, go to TFS, uh, jujitsu.com, the, the TFS system. That's what he calls it, Tolini fight system. Yeah. And uh, um, I learned some cool stuff from him. He helped me a lot with my passing and just getting the fundamentals down especially. And also in teaching, helped me understand teaching. But at this time when I had come back, I had started going down to, I'd started the GGL and I started going down to, um, train with the boys to Henzo's periodically. I'd, I'd gone and stayed down there with them for a little bit. You actually um, just so went got, to PR and trained with them, yeah, right? Yeah, I did. I spent the week last week uh, with at Damian Anderson's house. Uh, kid's such a stud. Hell yeah, um, dude. Got great training in every day with them. Um, but it was definitely a business trip, mm. but it's always an awesome. Yeah. Uh, uh, going to Puerto Rico. Oh, Hell yeah, dude. No, oh, no. <laughs> you know, I have it family was, there, dude. I, I oh, go that's pretty awesome. often. That's I'm, cool. actually, I'm actually probably going to be going sometime next month. Oh, nice. my mom wants to go. I am going next month also. We need to figure out when our dates are. Yes, that sounds like a good idea. <laughs> um, so, uh, um, yeah, so I, I, I started going down there and I started developing, you know, leg lock game and mm -hmm. learning, I learned so much. Yeah. So yeah. I learned the best good fundamentals and stuff, from. especially with Ben Tolini. Um, yeah. He helped me a lot in developing and learning how to learn jujitsu. Yeah. And, how and to that's all in New York, right, this Ben honest. Tolini guy? What's that? This is in New York. Where yeah, yeah. From. He's in Syracuse. He's actually yeah, going to be yeah. opening up a gym soon in uh, in Syracuse as well. Nice. So uh, in the Syracuse er area as well. So um, we're like all going to be opening up around the same time. Mm. And uh, I, I, I'm going to support him 100% too as well, just That's like the awesome. rest of the gyms around the area. But um, yeah, yeah. He's a, he's a stud. He's a great instructor. And he helped me with a lot of fundamentals and stuff. But um, and, and Mark Gervais, obviously at UA, you know, he he too was developing in jujitsu at the time right but questions he would help me with stuff as well in development um but uh it was really i really learned a lot i really learned a lot a lot of stuff uh my game really came together and i started forming a game you know i didn't have one before essentially figured out what i really wanted to do and the style of grappling that suited me well and um and the teaching style all of that you know I've really learned a lot of uh, those things down at Henzo's and um, with the Brunswick guys and stuff too. Uh, Damian Anderson, he's got his own school, All in One BJJ. Now it's it's uh, down in PR. No, no, not in uh, PR. It's actually in Jersey here. Okay. Yep. I was gonna so, say, I'm like, wait a minute. Which is a, so many gyms a just great school. Up yeah, yeah, yeah. Guys. So Damian has a school. He, he's from Gary's uh, All in One mm -hmm. BJJ. You got Al Bruce uh, has a school. Um, uh, Oh man, I'm, I gotta, I gotta remember that one now. Uh, mm -hmm. Harbor, Harbor Jiu Jitsu. That's mm -hmm. right. Jeez, I would have felt like a real asshole if I did it. That's <laughs> right, man. It, uh, your memory serves you. <laughs> you know so, I mean? uh, and and then Mike Reaction has uh, Immortals. Yeah, dude, so. I just had Mike on. Actually. Yeah, uh, he's so, he's such a funny dude. Mike's dude. so fun. He's dude. he's such a funny dude. dude I'm they, pretty sure he's competing are. today. Is he competing? I think so. Yes. I think they're doing grappling yeah. industries, right? Yeah, he said a bunch of his guys from his gym are competing. Oh, okay. I didn't know if he yeah. was competing too, but mm -hmm. or just coaching. But yeah, I'm not but sure yeah. which. I, I hope they, I know he's coaching at least. But I hope they're doing yeah. well. But yeah, all these guys got these gyms out here too. So I was lucky enough to be able to, um, to spend some time with like Damien and like the squad and stuff like that. Uh, I learned so much from them. Ethan, I always picked his brain when I could and learned a lot from him. Uh, um, Jason Rao mm -hmm. definitely uh, picked his brain when I could um, when I was around. Frankie Rowe, I didn't even mention him. He, I've learned a lot from him, just as much from him as anybody, actually. Um, I've watched a lot of his stuff, too. I've, I have I have a really, I, I don't know, it's really easy for me to learn from him for some reason. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, 
like. So I, I attribute a lot of me finding what I like and developing to that work that I got in with those guys. And obviously listening to John, you know, John Danher's instruction is, is unbelievable. I just try to keep up with it. And even if I can just keep one small thing out of everything that he does, like I'm cool with it, you know? Yeah, sure, yeah. And that's sure. kind of how Puerto Rico was last week for me. I was just trying my best to grasp, you know, one or two with small things Little each nuggets, day. Yeah, 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 while you weren't hung over or whatever. Yeah, right. <laughs> no, no, I wasn't. I didn't touch a drink all week. We were good, man. I I had been on the couch from an injury. Oh, uh, shit. For, yeah, yeah. And and putting the event together and stuff, too. Mm. Um, so and I was not in good shape yeah. when I went down there. I just, I just got my ass handed to me the whole time. Not that I wouldn't anyways. I yeah. just kick my ass anyways. But um, got the pleasure to work with Nick Ortiz. He's got a seminar coming up in Florida. Um, I imagine he'll start doing seminars and stuff like that up yeah. here when he comes back. He's, I like that guy, man. He's I, the, very the first, talented The first teacher, time I man. met that guy was at Finishers. Yeah. And he had some, like, crazy facial hair thing going yeah. on. I'm like, dude, I love your beard. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, Thanks, he's, man. he's funny as hell, man. He's real. He's definitely a character. But yeah. all that aside, he, he's he's a really good teacher. Yeah, Really I good imagine. teacher. Um, so, yeah, any any chance you get to work with these guys or have them out for your school, any any of them. Yeah, like any for of seminars them. and stuff. They're I know so, they're all they're so traveling good. around. But, I, I, anyways, I was lucky enough to learn from them. And uh, and then um, kind of was a, not quite as able to go down, you know. I uh, had to spend more time upstate. You know, my son getting into wrestling and, you know, getting a little bit older. These things become a little bit harder, too, as well. No doubt, uh, man. It's harder to Only be so many away. Only hours in the day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's harder to be away, too, for more than, like, a couple of days at a time from that at that age. You know, it's it's a lot different. Not that it's easy when they're younger, but um, – it's always hard, but it's extra hard when they're texting you. Like, yeah, you know what I mean? Dude, it's a, 100%. You know, you know. So, uh, you know, you got to kind of adapt and you know, prioritize and stuff. And um, I try to make the trips when I can now, you know. And um, after leaving that, that gym that I was talking about that didn't really facilitate a uh, competition at all, any, any way whatsoever, I had the Hanzo guys. That's what I was actually getting at. I had the Hanzo guys uh, um, corner me so many more times, uh, almost every like super fight or big match I've ever had. Um, I had the Hans I Hanzo guy in the in my corner from training with him in the city, right? And I've never had a single time uh, anybody from my own gym come to like support and like uh, corner me or anything like that. So that was a pretty big bummer. And uh, made the decision easier later on, you know, to leave after the COVID situation ha happened uh, and the way they handled it. Yeah. Some pretty, some pretty shady stuff. And, uh, um, with some good friends of mine that made mm. it really easy to make the final decision to cut it off. And, um, I made a great decision to go, uh, Oh, I was kind of in the, Oh, okay. Good. Could have been bad. Um, I, I was, I was in a interesting position. Uh, I train over at ultimate athletics and like MMA and stuff, but yeah. knowing I'm going to open up my school, knowing where I, um, where I, thrived learning you know in the system that i learning uh um, i was kind of still looking for you know where to end up because mm -hmm. i know that the guy i knew i knew before that the guys were going to pre puerto rico for a little while so i knew i knew that i had to make a decision and obviously i'm not going to puerto rico yeah <laughs> and even if i could i don't know if i could live there man that's it's a a very uh that's a very hot place to live yeah it's very humid it's very hot. yeah um i like the cold I yeah. really like the winter. I like the snow. I like, I got off the plane and I got out. I still had my shorts and everything on. Everybody's like, oh, they're all miserable coming from Florida, you know, because that was like the, yeah, the, the stop, right? Yeah, the intermediary, yeah. Yeah, and uh, I was very happy. You were chilling. Like, oh, yeah, nice. breathing in that cold air, right? <laughs> air conditioning, <laughs> natural. <laughs> yeah, so I knew I wasn't going anywhere. Um, and I, I knew I was going to need to open up my own spot. I really wanted a... Uh, Ultimate Athletics, the place that I'm at now, mm -hmm. is not like the guy. The owner there is has a huge focus in on um, like the powerlifting and stuff, which is awesome. I love it. It's so cool. There is a huge lifting area. It's most this in, is the, in one the of the cool. Gym? Yeah, That's yeah. So awesome. this is like the coolest gym you'll ever walk into. Yeah. You walk in and it's right in Phoenix, New York. It's like right off the highway. It's awesome. Um, you walk in and there's this huge. Uh, weightlifting area, free weights, uh, probably powerlifting stuff, machines and everything. It's so awesome. And then, and it has everything. 
And you go to the other side, like there's a desk and all that. And there's like a walkway and a whole other room. And it's just this massive room with just, uh, there's like a 50 by 50 mat. There's a, um, whole, a whole separate mat space. Uh, there's a big boxing ring, like a raised boxing ring, um, that we're actually, I think he's going to take it down and put even more mat space in there too. Cause yeah. classes is that, big, you know. is that near where the invitational is going to be? Yeah. 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 It's going to be right. very close. I guess, to uh, I guess we'll have to do a second video where we show off this yeah. epic power. <laughs> like yes, MMA for sure. Thing. I'd love to take you on a tour through there. Yeah. Uh, Mark's a very good friend of mine too. So uh, I'm going to, even when I open my gym, I'm going to continue to support every in any way possible, you know, for him. So, um, and, uh, yeah, so, uh, you, yeah, you go on the other side and it's a bunch of mat space and everything. You got the wrestling program there and all that. It's awesome. Uh, it doesn't, like, there isn't, like, a competition team, though. You know, it's not really a, um, there isn't, like, competition practices and times are, yeah. aren't always, you know, it's, 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 a lot of the guys are MMA guys. They're people who want to be MMA guys. You know what I mean? There's, yeah. there's, we only have a couple guys there and a girl uh, there that are, uh, are really just focused on jiu -jitsu, straight jujitsu, yeah. competitive jujitsu, you know? Yeah. So it's sometimes you need to just kind of create that environment. Uh, and and I, that's what I decided I was going to do. I'm going to open up a very, a, like a very competitive jujitsu gym of my own. It's going to be really competitive oriented in the beginning, especially while I'm running the invitational for the first like year or two. Hell yeah, dude. Then after that, we can focus more on like, the expansion, maybe adding a younger kids program instead of just like the, I'm going to do like uh, nine or 10 years old and up, you yeah. know what I mean? Just cause I want it to be able to be more competitively focused. For sure. Know? For sure. Um, no, it's so awesome, man. Like you're, you're going to be opening up this space with like a whole, like you have this entire like ecosystem that you're kind of building that's integrated. Exactly. Right. So this is, it's so, I'm, I'm wondering what is your thought process on having uh, like seminars at your space with other in, like instructors and stuff. Oh, I'm 100% going. Dude, I plan on saying, funneling. It seems like you're going to have a yes. really, really yes. like good hub. Yeah, man, absolutely. I And it's a great spot. And like from Canada, New England, like you got Pennsylvania and uh, the city and stuff. It's not that far away from everything. It's a couple hours, few hours. I make that drive on a very regular basis yeah you know? dude i mean yeah. this is two hours away and i've done countless podcasts right here. right right yeah this is five hours away from me and oh, it's oh man you know and i do i do you know normally i mean i was doing it very regularly you know last month i was out on injury and stuff but um you know, i'm gonna continue to like i'll be back here next week so uh but yeah so um i'm gonna be funneling like all the guys up there through there to, to teach their all uh seminars i want i want uh, John, John to come up, John Combs to come up too. Uh, uh, Tom is obviously going to come up eventually, yeah. right? Um, uh, there's, uh, I have like a, li I literally a list of people that I plan on bringing up. Oh, you know, Gary, Got the whole you know, calendars. Maybe eventually cool. Gordon. You know, um, it'll be, it'll be great. It's going to be great. I'm really excited for it. I see really big things coming, and I have an awesome outline planned. Um, on how I'm going to run classes and how I'm going to do things. So yeah. I'm going to bring uh, the, com the same kind of competitive vibe and structure that I felt in the blue basement um, to this place. That's so. awesome, man. I feel like that's something that if you're a competitor, you seek out, right? Absolutely. I feel like that's a common thing here. Like you have, you know, Nicky, Nicky. There's Rod, a reason why I make the drives. There's man. a lot of crazy guys that are yeah. training out of here. Like yeah. John Combs, of course, as well. Yeah, well, I go, I go to Tom's because I got like Cam. Cam's the brown and yeah. purple belt uh, fight to win champ. Mm -hmm. He's like he's gonna be a prospect at ADCC. Yeah. In the in the trials and stuff, you know, in that in that weight, he's I mean he's a prospect regardless. You know, he, the kid's a stud. Um, you got Jaden Mueller there. There she's a stud too. You know, um, this kid. Uh, there's Tyler. I, I'm like honestly, I feel bad. I don't remember his last name, but he's he's so good, and I've only seen him compete a couple times, mm -hmm. and. <laughs> like last night he kicked my ass when we were mm -hmm. rolling, you know That's like yeah, there's there's such good guys there and obviously tom's instruction is fantastic so um it's a proven legacy you don't get much better than that you know so uh and lineage you know yeah um certainly so it was an easy decision to make after fight to win i had talked to tom a little bit before that but after fight to win tom was like you know hey i want you to come down now you and cam can develop together you know um uh 
train with me now. We'll worry about down the road when you open your gym. You know what I mean? We'll, you know, just come down and train and, and be there, you know. Um, so that was a very easy decision to make, you know, to joining, the, joining his team and being under him. And it gives me a lot of confidence, too, when I open my gym. Uh, it'll be a very easy, you know, when you go to an area, to a new area, and you look, where am I going to train when I'm in that area? You look at the affiliation first, am I right? Yeah. In all honesty, if yeah. there's a recognizable name, of course. Like I mean, That's how it is for me, though, but I'm more competitive. So yeah, I don't speak I mean, for everybody. Even but for me, it's like almost like reputation from... I'm a casual jujitsu practitioner at the end of the day, right? Like I'm not, I'm not winning ADCC anytime soon or anything like that. Well, I'm right there with you, man. Uh, <laughs> it's, all, it's all good. It's all maybe good. maybe my maybe my son though. will one day. Uh, but you know what I mean. I, at the same time, I love to surround myself with the comp culture because I just vibe with it. I like it yeah. when some, when 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 a group of people, yeah, right. Mm -hmm. There's something there's, there's there's embers in these people that you don't find on the street in yeah. people, you know? So it's something we talked about a little bit before, rising tide raises all ship, right? Yes. Uh, so these people that have this motivation and you see them rising, you see them doing great. You can't help but as you spend time around them, you know, it spins it, it kind of yeah. it kind of rubs off on you, right? Yeah. <clears throat> I I I love this quote. This is another great quote, right? You sh you show me your friends, and I'll show you your future, dude. Right? Yeah, that's another was really a, good quote, I, right? That was a London real guy. Who is that? I I, I, I feel bad name. even saying it because yeah. I don't know. He's like, you want to <laughs> know why you're all it. fucked up? Look yeah, at all yeah, the yeah. Fucking bums you're hanging <laughs> yeah. out with. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I so, fucking love that, man. <laughs> so, so that is the truth, and and that's one thing I noticed. I, I thought I was serious, and then I went down to the basement i could barely even survive that month <laughs> like for real you know what i mean they, they have making there, those unfortunately man. oh it's but i imagine dude they would just shit on me when they open up their spot month. in puerto rico because they're not i don't think they're having guests right now really um um not really because they're all there's super limited mad space as it is uh i highly suggest you make that trip to train with them you know, yeah i really highly suggest you make that trip because it's a really cool experience just yeah. you know even if you don't do it regularly or anything it, yeah it's when they do have the camps and stuff like that definitely do it because it's just a great thing to experience to see that kind of work ethic to understand that there is there's a reason why there is the other level it's because they're doing things differently to get there you know um it's a different kind of commitment and dedication a different kind of effort you can feel it you can literally feel it in the yeah, room yeah man it's just different you know right like right when you step on the mat like it, like the earth kind of shakes a little it's like, a little oh, different right we're, we're somewhere yeah we're somewhere different right you now. feel very small and mm -hmm. and um, I mean, I feel, feel small anyways, mm. but, <laughs> but I feel very small when I'm in that room and, and it's very, very humbling. It's very humbling. How do you, how do you stay on top of not getting like consistently fucking injured and beat I up do. and shit? Like, yeah, but like, how I'm do you so handle injured. that? I, there's no handling it. You either bitch about it and whine about it. And I do that too. And sometimes I'm stuck on the couch and it's just, I'm, listen, I'm going to be 32 this year. Damn like you, I'm, man. I'm not, he's like, damn, you're old. <laughs> not, not yeah, even, bro. I'm like right <laughs> behind you, man. I'm like, fuck. Uh, but, but, um, yeah, I mean, uh, there's, uh, you just beat up. And this is, this is the story of any, any jujitsu combat. It's not like just me. I do things. I do extra hard. Now there are guys that work way harder than me and are more injured than me and still do more than I do. You know what I mean? Let's in all honesty, it's just a part of the game. You, you I've never fought an MMA fight, a kickboxing fight or jujitsu or had a jujitsu match um, where I was like completely uninjured. Never once. I really can't recall a single time where I was like, God, my body feels perfect today. Like, this is going to be great. Mm -hmm. No, it's always, oh, shit, I hope that he doesn't grab this. Yeah. <laughs> right, I hope that, you know, I hope my ankle's okay. Yeah. You know. uh, for, my, for one of my kickboxing fights, this is my first kickboxing fight, actually. I fought this, I mean, I learned, obviously, we all learned from Nicky Ryan, age is no number. I fought a, a younger younger guy, uh, a kid at, uh, who was undefeated at the time. I think he was like 5 or 6-0. and oh, And, uh and I had never fought kickboxing. I only had a few MMA fights. I was pretty confident, right? Well, I ended up jacking my ankle up bad, breaking my foot and jacking my ankle up really bad, like a week before, maybe two weeks before the fight. And um, <laughs> I just had to tape the shit out of it and, and just throw it, you know, throw it with my throw. You know what I mean? Like I, I've never, I, I just taped it up and I competed anyways and, and yeah. you know, threw it even harder. <laughs> you know, you have no choice. And that's not like a special story. It's like, oh, that's bad. 
every competitor has a like dozen story, stories yeah. probably way more badass than that yeah. too <laughs> like you know i i've there is no not getting injured you know i i i mean i'm sure there's science out there yeah that, you know, people that can afford the all the stem cells yeah, and all that you know what i mean real? But I, I, I can't do all that. <laughs> so funny, I'm not there. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get there. We'll get yeah, there, brother. Maybe. We'll see. <laughs> so let me ask, what gave you the idea for the name Emerald City? Like, tell oh, me it's a just bit a that. nickname for Syracuse. Oh. Yeah. Right. So. Well, I learned so, something new. Yeah. So it was, <laughs> it was, uh, it was it's the, the Salt City, City, the Orange Men, um, uh, Emerald City. There's a few others, too, that I saw when I looked it up, you know. Um, but I wanted to do something... I wanted to name my event and my gym, uh, which is which is going to be Emerald City Jiu Jitsu, and yeah. I will be opening in uh, probably like May. I'm assuming. Right? Make I really, sure you guys check it out. Yeah, yeah. I I think they're. I th I'm gonna try. I'm really gonna shoot uh, for a soft opening in like April, right? But I think I'm gonna have like an actual opening in May or June. So, um, big summer, big spring, big summer, a lot of fun. Everything's kind of coming together on its own though. But uh, anyways, yeah, I wanted to I wanted to name the gym the event something similar right i wanted to have it similar have them able to coincide with each other um and uh i wanted to, it to be something that represented syracuse because it won't be leaving syracuse mm. uh, i have aspirations to yeah yeah yep it is born and raised yes sir yes sir um i was born in and in, in syracuse actually and at saint joe's hospital so it's right in the heart of syracuse so um and Syracuse to a lot of people is not an especially nice place you know it's nothing special or anything but it has the potential to be something great and until somebody at least tries to help improve the area and, and who's gonna do it like these corporations these big stores aren't gonna do it they're yeah, gonna keep ripping honestly. them apart so maybe if maybe if by a byproduct of what I'm doing like helps create some sort of like community or like anything and it helps build up the area maybe i mean that would be awesome that's always a goal too that's but my my, my goal is really to with the jujitsu um pro invitational and my gym and such and um uh the opens that i'm going to be having uh, I, I want to kind of create the scene i want to help build it and facil facilitate the its growth over the next few years especially yeah i mean um, it's great timing right with so many people doing like a mass exodus out of new york city right right yeah, and yeah. people are going to be flocking to these nearby cities and yeah. it's a great time to start picking up some of this talent that you like holy shit you're this guy yeah you why'd you move here yeah yeah so at thing. that gym that i was talking about um um that I had left well, because of the same reasons a lot of other people are leaving too and starting their own gyms so there's like f three or four new gyms popping up in Syracuse all all will be like solid places taught by solid coaches and um you know that's there's going there's literally nothing and then it's po like exploding into something and you have all these other options all around town it's creating a scene that's it's as long as we can fac facilitate the growth of each of these places, right? Um, as long as, as a community, we can kind of work together to make sure, again, like I said, rising t rising tide raises all ships, right? Um, as long as we can, you know, keep that in mind, that concept in mind, and even with that place I was at before, you know what I mean? It was just everybody, everybody grows. Instead of trying to treat everybody like competition, that was my biggest problem with that place. Is mm. Just everybody's competition. It's oh, all really comp against even the his own training. Yeah, their stuff. own people and stuff. Like, uh, but anyways, uh, um, you can't have that if you want growth in the sport, you know, in, in the area, or to be taken serious for a long period of time by people who are serious, not just people who don't know any better because they have nothing else around, mm -hmm. you know? First time something serious comes in the area, those people get exposed really fast, you know what I mean? Um, and uh, and that's, what, that's what's gonna happen, that's what is happening, you know? And, uh, and we're gonna have so many options, so if you don't want, like, my more nogi-oriented, well, I'll have gi too, but more nogi-oriented uh, um, competition, competition culture, kind of yeah. vibe, right? Um, which, I mean, it's not I say that but it's not like I won't facilitate to casuals like it's yeah, not it's not like it won't be a place welcome for them like or I won't spend time with them or help develop them yeah right? I'm just honestly in the very beginning not going to be going over over the top in developing um 
like the the particular programs. I'm just gonna kind of I have a good group of people coming in in the beginning already that who are already ranked. I've been doing jujitsu, compete and stuff, and we're gonna kind of just let it make itself, you know, and and have people join and stuff. I'll have people join and stuff, and uh, and um, um, you know, people will people will still get the attention that they need, like I said, but I'll have competition class regularly. So it'll really be a good place for people who are more competitive, like a haven for them essentially. Right. Mm. And, uh, but anyways, um, yeah, uh, as, as my place grows, um, and the promotion grows, I'm going to be having these open tournaments in between each of the pro shows. That'll hopefully spotlight all of these gyms in the area, you know, the, the, Pennsylvania gyms, maybe the some of the New England gyms, you know, offer cash prizes for the opens, uh, and stick with the sub only vibe, you know. Where did you come maybe? up with this grand vision, man? Like, um, it seems I've like you have such a well thought out, s- like streamlined vision. Like, this is you, how you I, have an idea of what's going to happen. Right. Like, I, so I, I think that anything this. that you do and are serious about should be like that. You shouldn't. It's so hard to do things and be. I mean, people do things just on a whim all the time and they fail. Like you have to really think these things out. And this is something like an idea that's been in my head uh, since I started doing jujitsu and I realized the impact that it has on people's lives. So that was a big thing, you know, uh, the realize the impact it had on my life. When it came to the realization, just how much it changed me as a person, I was like, okay, well this is, uh, it sounds cheesy or whatever, but you have to give back. Like you have to at some point, like it, it, it makes you want to when you come to that realization. And, um, I think that it would, there'd be nothing like nothing better to me, you know, uh, than the impact I made on the sport to have this awesome pro event, um, and have facilitated the growth, the, um, the boom for jujitsu in upstate New York, you know, um, cause it was non-existent before I really started doing the competitions there. Yeah. Um, there's just one little, like a uh, family, like I said, self-defense kind of gym. Yeah. Um, that was really, you know, and, uh, so you, and then you in th- three you years, think I think it's going to be a really good thing that like all, th- there's so many gyms, like you said, like there's like three or four guys coming from where you came That's from. Awesome. I it think is it's awesome. great. Yeah. I think, I think it's great. And I'm going to do everything I can in my power to facilitate their growth. Mm-hmm. I want everybody to be successful. I think yeah. to try to drown other people out is not only does it make you look like a dick, yeah, but it's it's not good for the longevity of the sport in the area. Yeah, you so know you're what saying I mean? you you want to see jujitsu succeed and thrive in like the city, you, absolutely, you see it in Syracuse, like, part absolutely, of the culture, right? and yeah. all around it. That's like, awesome, man. I, until we do that, until somebody does that, how is it going to happen? You know, there there was only one place before, and they didn't let anybody. They didn't want anybody opening up a gym anywhere even close to them. So you're just going to have one place, and it's just there's no growth. The growth becomes inside that gym and that that's it. There's no scene. There's no, you know, you can't, you can't support a scene then with one gym. That's, we used to have Nagas that come to the area and they came, I think a couple times, realized there's all the competitors came from one gym, you know, and a handful from uh, another one. And like, that was it, you know, so they didn't come back. Yeah. So someone's got to change that or, you know, it's just going to be like that forever and there's yeah. going to be no growth in the sport. And that would be like that if, whether I was at this place or not before, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? It's still, it's still the same. It's still the same concepts, you know? Yeah. So what's your, what sets the Emerald City Invitational apart from other big events? What, how are you treating the competitors differently? How are you going to be putting together like the production team? What are you bringing that some of these other things are not? Well, I have you guys working the. uh, uh, a, a very very complex and i'm actually really confident in this in the quality of this stream now knowing that you guys have the people working with you that you do and uh and the equipment that you have yeah. and and the venue is awesome um it, it's it's gonna be really easy to facilitate a cool event for the spectators right but that's not my concern this is something that's really important everybody is worried about like you can grow your event in more than one way and it's to put on the freak shows and to put on the, um, the, the super fights and stuff, sell the yeah. tickets and everything, you know, these need to be like the, well, the freak show thing. It's not my, that's not really my jam, but, um, they need to be, all of these things need to be taken into consideration for growth. 
Um, there's a, a good way to do that. Uh, I think that if you just treat the competitors right and you provide a good product in jujitsu, especially it, it sells itself. It's mm. not like nobody cares outside of jujitsu about jujitsu. And, it, yeah. and it's not, I'm not gonna, I don't have this grand vision to bring it to the masses and stuff because I'm being realistic, at least not in the beginning. I want to put on a good show for jujitsu fans. Um, uh, and as a and practitioner jiu-jitsu. and someone who works with the GGL, I feel like you have a really informed opinion yeah. on how I've competed on all done, the right? shows. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. I've competed on most all the pro shows and and such. So, um, like I know, I've I can take all of these different things that people do, different people do, and say I like this, I don't like this. You know, I like this, I don't like this. Um, you know, I've I've pick the brains of some of the promoters and stuff and you know here we are i have a pretty good outlook of what i want like i I already know what the venue looks like in my head you know what i mean it's yeah i have everything i have everything very thought out what exactly what i want and now it's just time to make it a reality everything else came together so fast so fast for the event you know and 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 this is why i'm going so hard with everything so fast um like like opening up my spot that i was going to wait to open up until very recently um, and, uh, uh, go, going all out with this show. I'm, I'm, I have a really, 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 really great lineup. I'm really excited to release, um, can very you, can soon. Can you spoil anything? I can spoil a couple names. How Was about we get two? Is that good? All right, that's good. I think that's fair. All right. All right. Maybe we'll do three. All right. We'll do three. Okay. Three, three matchups. Three. Well, no, not matchups. Three names. Three names. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, so I don't, I don't, I'm not going to do brackets until right before. I'm not going to release the actual brackets until right before. Yeah, it makes um, sense. So, uh, John Combs is, ooh, John Combs is confirmed. ADCC. Studio Fours. That's right. ADCC veteran and, so. and trials winner. Um, we have Andrew Tackett is in. Which I mean I don't know if you know I mean he he's he's in the also in Flo's top ten yeah he is a stud I was I was I had the pleasure of going out and training with Andrew and William and Cody and a couple of the other guys there, um, and, and uh, under Rodrigo, and uh, and yeah it's I want to make sure I get the name right first before I say it. Those guys are based but out of Texas, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I'm getting it right. Okay. So, good guess. Good guess. The uh, the Rodrigo Cabral. I just wanted to make sure I had the name right before I said that. Um, he is a phenomenal coach, really, really good coach. And man, they got they have the best, like one of the best team. It's the same thing I feel in the in the basement. It was, it's they have like like one of the best team. Uh, vibes yeah right? yeah 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 everybody does everything they all work out and train they all uh lift and run like do all this stuff together mm-hmm. always all always they are all consistent they're the hardest working people some of the hardest working people you'll ever meet william is he might be the best pastor i've ever worked with before oh man really really talented kid um and uh yeah uh cody he's awesome you know i had the pleasure of uh working with those guys for about a week when i was down or five days i think when i was down um for a fight to win i was i competed on a fight to win down there against a kid that was i think he's like from like dark clan or some other one of the, i don't know one of those gyms down there yeah and um and yeah i i learned some stuff when i was there with them and got some great training and great training that facility that like that whole group of guys man that's they have they have a great, great future ahead of them. The team's only getting stronger, you know. Yeah. Um, they picked up, I think, uh, Grayson Henley recently too. Um, that kid's a, a stud. Pretty sure he won pans at, at Brown or Purple Belt. Mm. And uh, and like the, the, I mean, it's filled with solid competitors. But yeah, yeah. yeah so uh, gonna have Andrew out and uh, um, PJ Barch which oh yeah obviously he needs no introduction or anything you know 10th yeah. planet Re- phenom personally my too. favorite competitor out of 10th planet um i was one of the my first one of the guys the first guys i started watching you know uh the first guy being gary tonin uh, i think like the second 
uh, guy I really started watching was like Geo. So I have so much respect for like that yeah. whole that whole style and, and affiliation. So to have somebody that high up in like their in their respect is yeah. it feels really good. Well, to I, know I feel like out. it pays homage to what you are bringing, right? You are yeah. this experienced person who's got a passion for the sport and has you know you you eat, sleep, and breathe martial yes, arts. All day so long. they respect where you're coming from. Like, hey, I'm just starting this new invitational. I want like the best of the best on this thing. Here, right. How like how how I what would are love some strategies that you're implementing to convince these guys <laughs> to come to your show. I would love to think that like I would love to like I, I love that idea and that sounds awesome. To be honest with you, like like PJ, like these guys, they just want to compete, man. Oh, I don't think <laughs> I don't think <laughs> it matters who, dude. You you put a a worthy number in front of them to compete. Yeah. So you're flying and you all show them a platform that they'll actually want to compete on in a rule set that they like. What's the rule set? And they set? just want to compete. What's the rule set? Another really mean? exciting thing um, is we've been starving for EBI to come back for years, right? And Eddie seems, I mean, he's the man. Like that's they're the man, right? And then we got we got finishers, which is finishers MMA. Big shout out to like Zach Maslany and, yeah, and uh, JM Holland and the Shoulder Art guys. Ten P Bethlehem. Uh, yeah, Great man. In my backyard yes, sir. Valley. That's yeah. awesome. That's awesome. Uh, it's a hell of a group of guys too, man. Yeah, what factory guys, of man. killers there. Um, they're doing they're doing everything right. <laughs> uh, yeah, man. The the uh, the guys. Uh, what was I saying? They, oh yeah. That's yeah. <laughs> so uh, uh, the guys from 10th Planet Bethlehem are putting on finishers. They got a huge, huge venue, mm. no, new huge spot. They're gonna be probably putting on some killer shows as well. Um, uh, we have we have that for EBI rules, and uh, and that definitely scratches an itch for people for sure. Everybody everybody loves uh, finishers, man. It's like one of the most respected sub only promotions. Period. Even with like EBI, it's right there yeah. under it. You know what I mean? That's like the next best thing, right? Yeah. Um, and uh, we we're we have a, a big lack of like it being showcased. I think on a big platform right now. So my goal was to get it on a big platform, and um. I'm excited to announce uh, some stuff next week about, you know, the ways we'll be able to watch it and stuff and where this is the direction that this is going in. And uh, um, we'll have EBI in the highest of level again, like I'm um, top, top guys, ADCC yeah. veterans, EBI veterans, or, or I'm sorry, EBI veterans, ADCC veterans, uh, IBJJF world champions I got. And, and even just in this first event, yeah. and the sky is the limit. Um I'm excited to announce like a, a, an increase in the purse prize too. I'll be announcing that next week. Nice. Um, yes, yes. Where can we find that? Follow yeah. you on Instagram, right? Yes, follow me on Instagram. Uh, my page, Sam McHale MMA, but uh, definitely uh, like and follow all that stuff. Uh, the Emerald City Invitational, uh, Instagram and Facebook. We have a YouTube channel. Uh, that has all the old Global Grappling League matches on it too. So if you want to check out uh, some of the in-home events that I had the secondary camera guy, not the guy on the stream, um, do like like extra video for us, right? There's really nice organized footage on uh, on our YouTube channel as well. But yeah, um, and without the GGL now not being a thing essentially, you know, uh, and EBI doing combat jujitsu, like I was saying, I don't think he's going to, I don't know if he's going back to EBI. I know he said it a couple of times, Eddie doing like mm -hmm. the regular EBI thing. Uh, I think that someone needs to fill that gap on a big platform, like I yeah. was saying. So I'm excited to fill in those shoes and, um, and it's going to, I mean, we're going to have humble beginnings. Not, not that humble. I'm pretty mm -hmm. excited for yeah, the amount that we're, we're going to be able to do for start, people. We're starting with a big fucking boom, Yeah, dude. yeah, yeah. And, but, but just knowing that it's only going to get bigger from here. You know, mm -hmm. we're going to go through all the weight classes. I'm going to do women's and men's divisions. I'm, and then I'm going to have like an undercard. These are going to be good sized shows. You know, these are going to be a whole, you know, like almost like a fight to win length event. You know, um, I'm going to have a lot of super fights first. And then the main card is going to have the 16 man uh, tournament on it and such. So and I'm having a women's tourney as well. Um, uh, we're working through that the logistics of whether or not we're going to have the women's tourney on the same event um, or save it for an event of its own you know we're i'm not really sure yet i'd like to include the women's tournament in with it too i'm pretty sure we could do that just fine 
Um, and I have so many great, great, great women competitors that are already down from everything from like EBI veterans to IBJJF world champs, like I was saying. And, um, yeah, yeah. So the women's, the women's journey is going to be stacked as well. But, um, yeah, I, I want to make this like in, until Eddie, you know, takes that place back, comes back and takes that spot back. You know, I'd like to make this like fill in the shoes a little bit for what, what, um, you know, give it, fill in that hole a little bit and what the EBI left behind when they went to combat jujitsu. You know? Yeah. Not that that's not cool, you know, but for some people, it's just not their thing. They, yeah. they really miss the regular EBI format. That's totally understandable. So, um, yeah, I'm excited. The, so, the format, yeah. the rule set is so good. It's so yeah. spectator friendly and people, we know people love it and they have yeah. loved it for a it's while. It's more high paced, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so it's really, it was an easy decision to make. I was going to go with e- ADCC rules. There's a lot more, there's many more logistics involved with that, um, which I, obviously I'm not ignorant to. Um, I don't need anybody to tell me, oh, well, you need to do this and I need to make sure you have these people in the I know who I need involved with it and I would have been able to have them involved with it as well. And I still do plan on putting on a rules event like that, um, in time, but, uh, until then we're going to stick with a very, very easy and popular format. Yes. And that's the thing. It's already a very popular format that most, I mean, most spectators like, you know, if you ask even that, competitors, I feel like a lot of competitors even like EBI rules. Over yeah, like I personally, over, like I have IBJJF. like a love, right. I have a love, a love, hate. Yes, absolutely. I have a love, hate relationship with EBI rules. Mm-hmm. Um, I love sub only, but to start in those positions after, I mean, it's just got to be a testament of your skill and your defense, right? Just have to be better. Um, it just always seems strange to me, but there's no denying that it is super exciting yourself. You know, and it is uh, as a competitor, and, but it's also super exciting as a spectator. It's the reason why Eddie did it. And I think that's a good, good way to show somebody's skill. You know, I really do. Yeah. I think it's an efficient, like somebody wins with that, even in overtime. It's like, yeah, I want an overtime. It's still a win. You know what I mean? And you can be confident in that, you know, and I like knowing that as a competitor putting on a show too. I like knowing that because I've felt that as well, you know, um, I think that has the potential to be the biggest event, just like EBI was the biggest event. You know, yeah. I think it has the potential to be that too. And I think it will be in time. I think, uh, well, I know that production and, and everything is only going to get bigger and better over time. You yeah. know, and all of the money that comes in will be going back into the show. I'm not, I, I do things like, I mean, I do things on the side and I have ways to monetize like through sponsorships and stuff like that too. Um, with this, it's not like I won't, I, I, it's not like it won't be lucrative for me regardless, you know, and in time, I'm more worried about down the road, but to set something really strong up, you, you really have to put all your, all your stuff back into the show. Yeah. If you really do want to develop something special, that's going to last. You yeah. have to be prepared to do that. Certainly. And I'm very prepared to do that and, um, and plan on it. So, yeah um, it's so crazy man jujitsu seems to have so many people just wholly committed to building things like that you don't see in in not not just other sports but just other things like you know what i mean like when else do you see someone saying you know i'm gonna i'm gonna throw all my chips on the table because right. this needs to happen and i i have this vision right you know what i mean the only other place i can think of that you see it is like bands like with music well i you just i, I mean? don't know if that's true with uh promotions man to be honest with you, you know, yeah. Um, I don't. I just don't. Well, maybe know if not that's promotions, true. but gyms. You know what I mean? Gyms, like, absolutely. Like, it's a gr- great example. Like you just brought up like Zach and JM. Like they lived in the gym to start that thing, man. Yeah. It's it's you don't see that that sort of thing. That's so very often, man. They are the OGs, by the way. Hell yeah, um, When it comes to like the sub only, the EBI rule set, um, I might say like I'm I'm gonna put on, I am going to put on the biggest sub only events on the east coast for sure i'm i'm so excited to announce the lineups for these tourneys like you have no idea yeah I, I, keeping it in is so hard yeah um but uh um those guys are the ogs if there was no finishers i wouldn't have a show i wouldn't have done ggl i wouldn't have because i wouldn't i wouldn't have one i wouldn't have really thought okay i think that maybe we could do this too yeah um but also i wouldn't have had a format i essentially don't break something or don't fix something that's not broken. You yeah. know? And I noticed a lot of other, a lot of other places were doing the same thing. They followed that same format and it's just, 
it was just it was just the way to go and it helped me learn so much about the sport and like promoting in the beginning and everything you know um that the growth now comes a lot easier and me being able to confidently handle the growth you know it's i'm more i'm much more confident now in it <clears throat> and um but yeah they deserve so much credit though that that finishers they they did it before everybody they did it right before everybody you know what yeah. i mean and uh the way they they even with their platform like the way they market their fighters and stuff and and work to get their fighters paid and really put everything into giving back to the competitors like, yeah man that's a model that more people should follow you know? I, and i'm, I'm going to be man. following it myself yeah. i think it's really really important to me actually that uh that all the stuff i bring in all this growth i i have to facilitate um growth and uh loyalty and a sense of um like like team like a team vibe with with like you guys and the rest of the people working in the show yeah. because i'm not going to be a you know higher to the lowest bidder kind of guy you know what i mean yeah. like I, I plan on building a team that we can we can all Have help and be happy and about yeah, this exactly growth. exactly man. Um, that's the way to do it, man. Yeah, man. I think in order to do that, like you, you, like I have to be able to facilitate that with everybody and keep everybody happy on that front. But, um, I really do plan on, I, I'm, I'm going to be putting really everything back into the competitors, that's awesome, everything man. possible back into the competitors. I'm, uh, eliminating the, like in the, in the big, the main pro attorneys and stuff. Uh, I, I plan on eliminating like things like entry fees for attorneys that a lot of local attorneys have to do right and um that way it's it, you truly are you truly do have the grand prize that you have mm. you know so you're making a pot instead of no like, i'm not that's no? my that's my thing i'm mm. there's no more there's not going to be entry fees for any of my competitors so there now. won't even be a pot fee. like i'm thinking when, when i hear entry fee i think like uh maybe uh, let me rephrase this i think venue fee and then like you know comp fee and the comp fee is what gets distributed to the you yeah. know top I, three or how, however it may be i think it is important for a promoter to prioritize m making that not a thing if they're trying to build an event and they want com good competitors to come you're gonna have you to can't expect good competitors to yes yeah. you can't expect you know the you know high like guys at the top of the game really out there winning winning and i'm not talking about grappling industries and local sub only shows i'm talking about running the big shows you know and really have the spotlight on them uh, if, you, if you can't expect those guys to want to be on your show if you're making them pay an entry fee and stuff like that you know and which is i mean most of the people that are doing that don't want then that's not what they're trying to do so that doesn't matter but me in my case, that is what I'm trying to do, and I'm trying to facil facilitate that. Um, so I can't do that. So I had to change things up a little bit on how I did things if I really wanted it to, you know, take some more risks, take a few more risks um, if I wanted it to grow. And it's 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 already like the response has just been incredible. So I'm definitely not mad. I made the decision that I made. And um, uh, what's cool. Now, as of February 23rd, New York is opening back up. Upstate New York is out. I don't know about the city. I'm pretty yeah. sure they are too, though. Are opening back up to have, like, like venues are opening up for shows and stuff. So um, we'll be able to have spectators. It's going to be a whole open event. Yeah. So I'm really excited for that. So people will be able to come and enjoy the show from, hopefully, from all over. From P Like I said, New England, PA, New York City, you know, some Canadian people, if they're allowed to come into the United States by then, um, be able to come down and enjoy the show, and we can really build this thing. Hell you yeah, know? man! You know, I'm excited to have something at that top, like that yeah. top of the game, and right there in Central New York. You know, yeah, it's really you're, in, you're in where it needs to be, right? I think so. Yeah. If it, I think so, if I want, if my priority is to grow the scene in the area, you know, if my priority was just to put the biggest show that I can on with the biggest, with the most amount of spectators. Um, then I would have gone to a different spot, you mm -hmm. know, much different spot. But I'm confident that with how I'm handling it, doing all the local super fights, and I'm doing some higher level wrestling matches on it as well. And remember, like Cornell is is close by. Like Gene Mills, my wrestling coach, will be refereeing refereeing them. And if anybody knows wrestling, like actually knows wrestling, then they know who Gene is. Yeah, you know, he's a legend. He's one of the best of all time. Um, he will be 
helping me with, you know, USA wrestling and all that, like facilitating, um, the wrestling matches. And he's talking about getting like Kyle Dake on for a match, uh, not in April cause trials are right then yeah. Olympic trials are, but like this summer we were going to try for him, uh, on this one, but, um, you're trying to do it like seasonal. Yeah. 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 Oh, I think it's smart. Well, I just don't want to have these. I'm just going to get all the guys that aren't in the Olympic trials. That's all. Mm. So, still like wrestling champions that will bring in wrestling fans yeah. we have an extremely extremely strong following for um college and high school wrestling in our area very good wrestlers because of gene yeah because he started the scene after leaving su after they cut the wrestling program um after uh and, and teaching all around and stuff him having the history of being the olympian uh, blah 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 you know um world champion all his list of accomplishments whatever yeah um he really created that scene kind of like how i'm trying to do it right and um and now there's this massive following for it so if i have some wrestling matches on the shows too that's just going to put more butts in the sea yeah it makes sense and then we'll get like me. flow wrestling yeah looking at yeah, it and right. like some of the well, other like wrestling like you know I feel it's like full it sports could, it's right, like a whole yeah, blanket so much saying. right um so uh we get a lot of like wrestling fans and uh there's uh there's another one too that uh, track wrestling i think it's called mm -hmm. uh another streaming service too um that does coverage as well not just obviously not streaming i wouldn't have my event streamed on there but um um gene actually has his eastern nationals the gene mills eastern nationals um on track wrestling as well so get coverage all over for the wrestling matches as well it's just it just creates more exposure mm -hmm. you know helps build everything up and the more it builds up the more we can facilitate the growth for the competitors as well so yeah uh, i'm excited man really big things are coming with the event um of my gym opening up uh and uh like around the same time you know being yeah. able to kind of play off of that too you know um i'm excited to be able to not have to deal with politics or any other bs like and just be able to focus on exactly what i want and how i want to do things you know what i mean Definitely. if that makes any sense you it know does, I'd say it any business owner i'm sure could say yeah that's why i wanted to do what i'm doing too yeah. <laughs> myself you know i feel like it's no different than anybody else so mm -hmm. that's awesome, I'm, I'm excited to have the support that i have uh for it as well so yeah big things coming yeah it's gonna be fun and you guys are involved too yeah man i'm, I'm excited man it, it seems like this this whole quarantine and pandemic stuff has been a big it's been a big thing for people to either make or break the situation right Very a good. lot of people decided you know hey like this is time to be a recluse and i'm just gonna like focus in on one thing and like you know or they just fell apart or just exactly it's time to be a recluse and, and just the, fall yeah, apart just let the, <laughs> i guess i'm just gonna focus on netflix and be depressed yeah. and you know it, it, i just it, couldn't it do that it shattered me in the beginning like i lost like i had moved from my hometown to philly for a new job and then the like i was a manager at a gym and it closed down because oh, of no. the pandemic and it, like it, it's gone now like it's, it doesn't exist anymore <sighs> that's so sad it I'm sucks but lie. at the same time i wouldn't be chasing this dream that i have with the podcast and all the other things like i'm doing with the film and like now with you like it's crazy how i just I'm just like a magnet and more metal just keeps getting stuck to me. I'm like, whoa, yeah, we dude, things. that's how it goes. So that was my biggest thing. As long as you're a good person, right? And you're willing, you have the ability to network. You're not overly yeah, shy. You're willing to talk to the people and you're willing to travel and you're really willing to put in the work to create the relationships that you know that you will need to succeed and be able to support whatever dream or vision that you have. Then, I mean, then you're, you're just, you're going to get out of it what you put in. Hell yeah, you know, man. if you put that, if you put the time in and shit, dude, it, it comes back. Like it's going to come back. Like it's starting to now for me. It's not, so since the COVID thing, um, there's like a, where I was, I told you in the transition, mm -hmm. that's kind of when it happened. Right. Because of that situation. Right. They, Weird timing, they're like, right? they're like, yeah, something like that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, uh, there, you know, there was absolutely no training and I had people there that were like, one of the instructors there was like, he's going to kill these people that he's like training on the side. And I'm so scared for them. It's like, ugh, just bitchiest little girl stuff, you know? Dude. And, um, just, yeah. Saying these horrible, awful things just because I chose to just, I wanted to keep training the people who chose to come to me and train. Like, I don't, you know, what is that? I don't understand how 
how it's a good idea just to completely shut yourself off inside of your house and not contact, like not be in the outside yeah. world. And like, and la- like, do you think things are just going to run themselves? Money comes from nowhere. Yeah, and honestly. Of course. Obviously, it wasn't a thing that lasted two weeks. So... You know, it's, and it's, it's not working. Thing, like it's, it's another thing with the jujitsu community. I was trying to explain this to a few of my friends who, you know, in the beginning stages of this stuff, because people didn't stop training. We just found new places to train, right? But what the culture of jujitsu, something that, you know, you don't see from the outside is we're all scared of staff. <laughs> right. So we're all very clean already. Yeah, we're already yeah. concerned about killing like the viruses and stuff. And another thing, like I've had this conversation with some of my like more medical like biology friends, is we're incubating each other's bacteria that are on each other's bodies. Like my body knows your b- germ. Like our germs know each oh, other yeah. because we're seeing each shit. other all the time. You know, <laughs> what I mean? you know what I'm saying? It's it's like we're, it, this isn't a bad thing to do. Like I'm I'm already making my immune system stronger every time I, yeah. I'm, I'm rolling consistently with these yeah. people. Do you know a single person? And I, I do mean this honestly. Like, and I'm not trying to be a conspiracy theorist or anything like do you know a single person who is in really good shape and i mean really good shape that doesn't have any uh like in jujitsu shape that doesn't have like some sort of other awful illness and this and that like uh or or autoimmune disease or anything like that 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 keeps them at risk that actually got like deathly ill from it no man i I have a and that's all if you show me someone that wasn't the exception that wasn't you know what i mean that didn't have any of the you know and it just, you know, I, I got it. I did. I went through it. You know, I did. It. I remember I was, I was, um, I went down to a wedding in Ohio. I'm pretty sure that's where uh, I picked it up, to be mm-hmm. honest with you. And uh, it is what it is. You know, I didn't I mean a whole group of people got it, actually. And they, I mean, these people I was with, they took like the the rapid test. And like, no, we're good. And they're like, okay, well, we took the rapid test. And then we took a regular one. That one said negative. This one says positive. They're like, no, no, we're good. We don't have it. Mm-hmm. Because we took the rapid, you know, pretty sure everybody had it. It ended up getting around, obviously, and then everybody was fine. And, you know, I, I didn't, yeah. I was, I felt like I had a cold for a day. It was yeah. really it. You know, I, I had the sweats and I felt like I had a cold. And then I, I quarantined. I, after I found out, I did quarantine for the two weeks and stuff. I didn't train or anything like that. And, um, <laughs> and, uh, um, ended up hopping right back on the horse, just fine. Got retested, yeah, was man. negative, and <laughs> went and competed like a week later. Yeah, and it's crazy. But that, that's the culture too, right? Like, if you have staff, you're not gonna show up on the mat for like till it's right. sealed. Like, we we already know this stuff. Right, right. So I get the so the, the, there's a whole asymptomatic argument, right? Mm. And that's the scary part. Everything about this thing is. I'm not gonna pretend like it's not a thing. I'm not, yeah. Like it's. I'm not gonna pretend like it's not a thing that should be that we should be precautious about. You know. But are you going to stop living life for it? Like, you're going to yeah. take years out of your life for this? Like, no. How about we just are responsible people? And if, one, if you feel sick, stay home, right? If, if you think you might have been exposed, get tested, whatever. Um, and, and if you're, a, a, like, if you're especially susceptible or anything like that, you need to make the accommodations. Don't make it up to somebody else. Don't leave it up yeah. to somebody else to have to make accommodations for you. Cause it's selfish as hell. Yeah. You know, and, and that's it not is. a good way to, I mean, that's not how we do things. It's, that's not, a not, way, we, it's not a way to conduct your life. Right. I feel, I feel like that's so many, that's a, and the same mindset is the same kind of people that are like, Oh, I don't like, um, I don't like when you talk about that thing around me. Cause it, it triggers me or whatever. So just don't talk around that about that thing around me. So I have to do it different. Cause it's like an insecurity of yours. Like, no, how about it's your responsibility to take care of that yeah. shit. You know most, what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> well, it's that same kind of school of thought, you know, I just have a hard time relating with it. I don't know. I don't know. I, uh, I'm with you. 100%, I, I definitely right? took the precautions. I, I'm, I will, I get tested. I had to get tested before Puerto Rico. I got tested literally as soon as I got off the, the fucking plane, you know, I had no choice, you know, or at least that's what they said. I don't mm. know. I'm not one. I'm not willing to really find out no, if right. I actually do or not. <laughs> You're be stuck there and shit. Nah, I'm yeah. good. Just stay the way. Stay away from that. But I mean, I mean, I had it. I had to do that though. Like I said, I had it not all that long ago, just a handful of months ago. So I mean, it's not like I don't have the immunity build up and everything. Um, these other people, these other people are getting tested every single time they, they. Uh, they have to fly or they have to travel to compete and all this and that they're doing it sometimes two, three times a week. And, and people are still like, 
oh, you're going to kill everybody you know. Like, you're the, you're the problem. You're part of the problem and stuff. I think people just need to take a step back and realize that you have to live your life still. Everybody has to live their fucking life still. Yeah. Man. And you just because you see someone doing something that you don't agree with doesn't always mean that they're doing something malicious to the culture. Right. Absolutely. Like, that, like, it, like, why are they the yeah. Like why, why are, are you they concerned about me? Like, I'm not I'm not going to visit your you. grandma. Right. You know what I mean? After this and coughing. on. A me. lot of these guys are the guy, same guys that are like public service announcement. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, nobody cares. Yeah. Uh, nobody cares. <laughs> yeah, it's just, shit's fucking wild. It changed everything, though. It has changed everything. Were you like negatively affected by the the, the quarantine and stuff? Like, did it did it mess anything? Uh, well, that this you is had actually a point on? I was gonna. Yeah. I was before I started babbling and rambling on. Right. Um, this is a uh, a point I was gonna get to. The the quarantine people they shut the gyms down, and there's so many people who just refused to do that. So they wanted private training and it just kind of increased the amount of private lessons that I got and which then in turn, word of mouth and blah, 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 whatever. I just got me more private lessons. And now I have a very steady group of people um, that are all just waiting for me to open up my spot essentially. Mm -hmm. And like when I open up, I have like guaranteed like, like 16 people on my mats immediately yeah like that's in the spot that i'm opening up the rent is so cheap oh, so nice. it's like my bills are paid already and nice. in between that and the personal lessons i do like it's only i can only go up from there that's why i'm so secure and confident in doing it while i'm doing the event because i know that because i know i can't put all of my effort and focus into it right now not quite yet you know i still feel confident on giving myself this space to be able to teach and start something uh because i already have such a good group of people that are ready to come train you know? yeah you're it'll be like just, a, you're kind of just mounting the assault like all right everyone get ready like yeah. all right this platoon go this platoon <laughs> go. Like, you know, look we're gonna launch each project we're, in yeah man with absolutely 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 and and i it's gonna be like no politics too i went for my comp classes and my comp my for my comp team and stuff i'm gonna allow uh everybody from all the gyms to come from any anywhere from from all over and uh I'm pretty, and like I said, I'm going to have awesome people come up and teach regularly too as well. I'm going to have regular seminars, uh, regular camps, all that stuff. So I'm not going to charge any more money for like the camps that I have at my gym. You know, if you pay a membership, then you're going to, you're going to, the classes, any of the classes that I put on the schedule will be included. It's such a, like a, a low, like a low thing to do. And um, so, and I'll be doing a lot of those too specified like uh technique uh camps and such right that'll be included in the membership or if you don't go to the gym you can come and you can pay the camp fee right um it's just one of many one of many uh things i plan on implementing to make sure there's a cohesive environment yeah everybody gets along kind of a thing and uh but you're keeping good talent attracted yeah exactly exactly the right everybody knows that i have the i'm doing things for the right reasons here i do want everything to grow and it'll only make us grow as well you know why why treat especially in such a fragile area why treat other gyms as competition it just doesn't make any sense to me it's a fragile area um because the things are so fresh and new but not because the interest isn't there because the people aren't there because they are you know it's just somebody needs to actually put the effort into doing it and doing it right that's yeah. it you know definitely so it's gonna be fun it's gonna be a fun spring it's fun summer so yeah that sounds yep. awesome, man. So l- let's talk a little bit about like uh, like you, right? <laughs> oh, <all> right. <laughs> let's, let's get let's get behind the man. Um, what is your favorite promotion to compete under? Like you, you were obviously p- oh, building one up, but like, what's man. your favorite one that you've ever Dude, done? Do you have a story? I have to go. With yeah. I mean, fight doing is so cool. Yeah, because you got the stage. It's on flow grappling, which is fucking awesome. You know, mm-hmm. uh, I'm a super fan. There's a lot of people that like they have things to say or whatever, but they I've I don't know. I've dealt with the guys plenty and, and they're all really great people, like really great people so far for me. And, um, and, uh, like, uh, they put on the biggest shows, they facilitate the biggest shows and they help with the growth of the shows. And to say that they don't just because they're not offering some absurd amount of money per event is just, it's just asinine and ignorant. You know, people don't watch these events except for the people that have like the flow memberships anyways yeah. so to expect to like this whole galvao thing with the 
I want a million dollar bullshit. Oh, what are you thinking? Where, and you publicly came from? out with yeah. that? You let that thought escape your mouth to the public too? That's crazy to me. Um, and he's like, and I know he's not, not like, um, uh, one of my, a friend that I was talking to, uh, actually Mo, uh, he, he's like, he's not like, he's not like that. Like, he's not that guy. I think, yeah. you know, he's Dude, just like trolling pe- or something. People are different on social media, bro. Yeah, it's like trolling, you know, it's like, uh, I don't know. I'm not really sure what it, what it is, but, uh, I mean, he's, he's Andre Galvao. Mm-hmm. So, you know, you can only say so much, but at the same time, like, listen, even at its absolute best, like in the greatest of great, like, uh, of situations, money-wise for these competitors that it's just like such an absurd thing to ask for or expect you need to be able to uh you have to be able to um like there's only so many people that are gonna be watching and you have to be able to understand that yeah and so your expectation is a little bit different you know um but yeah i've i've have a i've had uh i've i've had awesome like an awesome time competing on the fight to win stage i've strongly disliked the judging and uh one match in particular i'm not a fan of the judging in another match that i had on there um uh there's uh, finishers like i had said finishers is like it felt the realest for me that was the biggest like the biggest deal for me to get on a finishers when i finally got that i felt like i had accomplished something yeah like you made i finally felt like i accomplished a little bit you know even though it wasn't like a bit you know i got in the finishers tourney and I, i had a uh a super fight and stuff and um definitely not the outcome i wanted for the tourney and the super fight i had with stapleton there uh, jack stapleton john Staple- i don't know it, it, ja- it is jack is it? <laughs> we were talking about him earlier and i said john yeah he's he's just the kid's a stud you know um i uh i ended up losing in overtime to him after a very exciting match really really fun match um but uh and ride on uh, ride time and even still after that was real butt hurt about the loss and stuff but that mm-hmm. was i was still so appreciative of being on that show it's it was such cool a cool feeling stage, man yeah yeah i mean they it was a it great up. feeling and, and that and i think that kind of feeling i want to emulate that's not just another thing that finishers does that i want to make sure i embody i want to keep competitors you yeah want absolutely that, yeah. i, I want to still have that same thing at in those high level shows because you feel so as a competitor on the high level shows you feel so uh like small you know what i mean it doesn't yeah. feel like you're i don't know at least that I, that's what i've seen granted i'm not on the in the upper echelon or anything like that but um <clears throat> i feel like a lot of the promoters aside from like adcc obviously could do more for their competitors yeah and uh, i want to kind of facilitate that as well you know yeah you're so. you're a you're a promoter for the competitor yeah because you know? i am a competitor yeah and because i truly do love the support the sport and i i'm not doing this to make money and people say that oh we don't make money we're not doing this to make. i'm really not doing this to make money <laughs> like and, and it'll show i could show i'll show you the i can show you the books after like yeah. it's you know it's not i'm not making money off of it right it's it's not at least not in the beginning yeah uh, this is a, a dragon egg we exactly need to right before yeah exactly hatch. right yep. um so uh i have a question here if i was a uh young lad from studio 84 or something like this and i was interested in getting on your show how would i apply to be in the emerald city invitational so i i have a website up right now it's it's um like pretty much in its preliminary pre- preliminary stages like uh it's infancy right i made it myself i am not a website designer you use squarespace yeah Mommy. i did and it was awesome yeah, it was squarespace actually awesome and it was a few days of <laughs> working things out and stuff but i did it all myself and wanted to it was part of like the thought process and making this little thing a reality and it really at the time when i even when i made the website it was going to be a much smaller show it's going to be an in-gym show still mm-hmm. and it was you know and uh definitely blew up and took off on its I don't know not what, on its what own what was the catalyst that like kind of gave you the aspiration like this needs to be a massive thing um when it came I came to the realization how hungry people are not only just to compete but to have that form of competition back that yeah the EBI sub only competition instead of the judging yeah, ones yeah oh. I feel you I feel you cuz I've man I I have yet to see an event that has they have judge decisions mm-hmm. where I'm like, oh yeah, that's a good decision yeah. on all of the matches or even most of the most, matches, yeah. to be honest with you. 
No one wants so. to be the judge. Either, yeah, exactly. No, that's the thing, though. That's the thing. Yeah. It's such a hard job. Mm -hmm. I've, judged, I've judged MMA fights. I've, I'm registered with the New York State Athletic Commission and stuff, and uh, I, I'm an, a registered inspector. I have the ability to ref, and um, uh, like I've ref some like sub only events and stuff too. But I can ref MMA fights as well, and um, I judge and I have judged a handful of times. Yeah, and. Uh, that is not a fun job, man. Yeah. No, oh no. man, that's such a, that's such a hard job. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, it's stressful. It, it, you're gonna make someone mad. Yeah. At the no, end matter, of the day, no matter, no matter what. what Somebody's yeah. what? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, it's like, so, dude, you fucking, we're getting dominated. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, or especially yeah. when it's a like, razor thin. Oh yeah, dude, no doubt. You gotta just piss someone else out. You could go. Yeah, I could go either way. Yeah. But you have to be the one to decide yeah, who to give that to. Give me, <laughs> it give me five sucks, minutes, dude. Man. Give me five minutes. You got footage? Can I <laughs> yeah. watch it? Can I go back and watch it? <laughs> I need to see that from another angle. Uh, <laughs> but you were saying about your website. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. See, yeah, I, it was my fault. Like... I wanted, I wanted to ask that. I wanted. To, <laughs> sorry, tangents happen. Oh there. god, I, that's that's the story of my life, man. That's my show, dude. Yeah, <laughs> perfect, perfect. And we're gonna work great together. Um, yeah, go on to emeraldcity.com so on the website on the phone you click the menu thing it's really not that hard to figure out or to find um you click the menu thing and i've had like a, a, like three people message me I, i've had hundreds of applications which is awesome yeah it got we such actually a good have response. the website in the description there yeah yep emerald city www.emeraldcityinvitational.com uh, and the, the Instagram handle is uh, Emerald, at City, Emerald Invitational. City Invitational. And it's yep. all actually right under um, Sam. If you guys want to see all that stuff, it is written right, right? there. Right? Is that? Yep. Yep, right there. All right. It's so funny because I remember one time I was like looking at the screen and I was like, oh, Pointed wait, completely in the wrong. It's like fucking just think about where you are. It's like my name, his name, you fucking idiot. <laughs> yeah, so uh, you go right on the, mo the mobile site. Um, I had to do two of them. The mobile site has it right in the menu. There's like a drop down menu. Nice. That'll pop up, right? And at the bottom of the menu, there's a black button that says uh, competitor application. Click the competitor application. Yeah. And then on the 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 desktop site, uh, there's a button that says fighter application rate at the very top at the menu. Nice. Uh, and it kind of did that on its own. And like I said, I'm only so savvy with this stuff. So mm -hmm. give me a break guys. Um, it kind of did that on its own with the drop down menu because of where I have it on the regular menu, which is what I designed first. I should have yeah. probably designed the mobile, mobile one. And then first, yeah. <laughs> Cause nobody's looking at it. That's not uh, on their phone, yeah. whatever. But, um, I have applications there. It, it, requires obviously the the name weight rank uh affiliation and and you don't get to say i don't well it's i mean you can say obviously uh I, um i want to be in the tourney you can I, of course you could say that it's not like i'll be like oh you're not in it now <laughs> uh but i do invites off of those applications for the actual pro tourney mm -hmm. and then the otherwise the the applications are used for super fights mm -hmm. so i'll offer hey you put an application I'm sorry, you might not have a spot in the tournament if that was your desire, but if you'd like to be to have a super like fight on this featured, event, yeah. yeah. Um, like we need these people. Like I have this guy. Would yep. You like oh, I just do guy? regular same, matchups. Exactly. Same weight, same belt. Kind exactly. Of thing. Exactly. Awesome, man. Um, I'm gonna have a lot of. I'm like I'm like such a nerd for logistics. It just seems like ah, oh, just like t it tastes good how your like databasing it. is like. I'm an empirical I'm person. I like it. it. <laughs> yeah, I uh, I like uh, I really like the format that we have for like the website and stuff too right now. Um, but I am going to be handing all that stuff over to a professional. Mm. So, uh, it'll, the, I'm still deciding whether or not the social media I want to hand over and not just do all myself. It's so much work, dude. It is, man. I, I, uh, I actually just made a video. I don't know if you saw, I threw it on my Instagram, but, and it's on my YouTube as well. I just talked about how, uh, the new terms that the Zuck threw out there for Instagram and stuff just kind of, does some really overreaching shit that I'm not a fan of. So mm. I have like my old phone Good old that I, yeah, fucking. Mm. Fuck that fuck. <laughs> you, you could fight any celebrity. Who would it be? Oh man, <laughs> what an awesome question, Ron Perlman. What? <laughs> Why? I don't like Ron Perlman. I don't know. Why? So funny story, right? I'm at Bellator. Uh, my 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 little brother Kevin Carrier. He's a Bell he fights. He's fight, uh, a pro fighter. He fought for Bellator. Yeah. Um, beat the shit out of some poor guy from California. Um. So I'm uh, <laughs> I'm sitting like in the front row, and my other friend Joe Wall has like, I don't know if he brought him over there or what. This Joe just he manages to just talk to everybody. He's one of these kind of guys, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, big MMA fan, you know, did jujitsu for a second too, like. And he goes, he he 
for some reason had Ron Perlman was there at the Bellator event. Now everybody, all of my friends know, I don't know if Joe knew that at the time, but all my other friends know that I can, I do not like Ron Perlman. I don't know what it is about him. I just don't like He's him. He's just got a face just don't, that yeah, you That's exactly hit. it. That's exactly <laughs> So it's funny, Hellboy, I didn't mind, but I feel like that's just it's like a representation of him. Like, you know, it's just, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. I was okay with that it's because so he was in funny, makeup dude. and whatever. <laughs> whatever, whatever, right? I just don't like his face. I don't know what it is really. But yeah, uh, so he goes through the line of us and I'm just in awe. Because we've all like laughed about this situation multiple times. It was like, no way, this is actually fucking happening. I had a couple yeah. beers and stuff too, and uh, and he's going down like the line. The few of the people around me, and he's like shaking the hand, shaking uh, a couple of my buddies' hands because they were like, oh, eh, whatever. And he was walking out from the back in Bellator where the fighters come from, right? And we were like right there because our buddy was fighting. Yeah. And and uh, he was like this to me. I didn't even mean to. I didn't even think about it. But I just looked at his hand and looked back up at him and I didn't shake his hand. And he's just like, okay. And like moved on to the next guy. <laughs> what the fuck, bro? <laughs> Uh, so uh, all of my Were you drunk? Uh, I wasn't drunk. I'm never drunk. I don't uh, get like drunk drunk, yeah. right? But uh I just but I like did that. have a few drinks. <laughs> <laughs> Although I think I would have oh, probably shit. done the same. I wouldn't have registered that situation like properly said, I even if I was I sober. Like if, you were, if you were drunk, you might have did something even worse. Like get the fuck out of here, Ron. No, like, no. <laughs> I'm not that. I'm actually more likely to do that sober. Oh, really? <laughs> if you have a few beers in me, if I got a few beers in me, um I'm the nicest person in the world. Oh, you're I am the, happy. Oh, I'm the opposite of an angry drunk. I've, I've, there's been, there's one night I can recall to where, uh, I was like, you know what? Yeah, I do kind of want to punch that guy in the face. You know what I mean? When yeah. I, I was drunk, like at a bar or something yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. Otherwise drinking, I don't, I'm not a big drinker though. You know, yeah. I, I love, I love, I love a good drink. I love a good beer. I love a good sour. I love me some whiskey. Oh yeah, man. But, um, but I'm not a big drinker, you yeah. know, I've uh, other vices I've yeah. ever taken, you know, um, and uh yeah <laughs> yeah but that, that was a funny night i figured that was that, that, that's gotta that, be a celebrity that was an outstanding story yeah i, I feel like i have to go with ron perlman to be honest with you i feel like i'd have to i'd that's have to go with ron that's perlman. funny well uh to, to bring it back uh i would fight mark zuckerberg <laughs> <laughs> uh, i figured as much because you asked me that yeah, right as we talked yeah, about exactly. Zuck, so. um uh, great! I love love the tangent. There. I don't know. Have favorite. fun with that one though. I don't yeah. think he's human, dude. Yeah, I, I, I was gonna say I'm kind of worried about the lizard teeth kind of situation. Oh, that's a whole other you know school. I, mean? th I was I thinking like he, he was acid. Uh, still, though, <laughs> I was thinking he's a robot. I feel like if I'm pretty I take, sure he's a robot. If I take his back, I'm gonna I'm gonna have the advantage. Unless he's a robot. Well, unless he's like a T1000, he's liquid metal. Yeah, and just turn right back yeah. around. Then I'm really fucked. Or even just like a regular, ter you can't choke out Arnold Terminator okay, either. I guess you're right. Imagine, so you know what's funny? Imagine if this shit comes to reality, right? And that's the face of the Terminator. Like that guy with his little skinny fat body. Right, like yeah. he's, he's the scary, he's the scary Terminator oh, walking shit. through the streets, hunting people down yeah. and shit. It's pretty real, just choking people with one fucking hand and Oh shit. my God. Oh my God. That's awesome. Funny as hell. Yeah. Um, so. But yeah, he, uh, I, I just don't like, uh, a lot of the stuff. Do you, you, you see that movie, The Social Dilemma, on Netflix? I actually still haven't watched that. Check I it still out, haven't man. watched it's, that. I heard it was it's, really good. It's it's it, it was really good. Like this is, I used to work in IT, right? Like I, I have like seven years of experience as a fucking cybersecurity. Oh wow! Guy. Nice. Um. So, what it does, is it says a lot of the th concerns that I have, <clears throat> in a way that people who don't work in the industry can understand. And I'm like, fucking, like I was watching it. I'm like, God, that was so well said. I can't figure out how to fucking ever see it. Right, right, And they have right. like actors acting some like shit out. Like they have the depressed little girl with the fucking apps and shit. <laughs> and you have, a, you have a young boy yourself. So definitely, definitely oh, yeah, worth he checking doesn't. it out, man. Yeah, he doesn't. Like, uh, it might change the way you <clears throat> kind of do some things. Like I, I have a lot of limits on my son's, you know, my son and everything. absolutely does not, will not be allowed to do like the whole social media thing. It's just yeah. not going to be a thing. I don't really care. Like, I, it's it's just not going to be a thing. There's just too many just garbage shit influences yeah. from it. And, and it, people that don't it, think. It can cause so know. many problems psychologically. Like, Absolutely. I, remo I removed Absolutely. it from my phone. Since then, I can't tell you how much more productive I am as a person. And I, I was wondering, start. I was wondering, like, or like, earlier this year, I'm like, why the fuck am I not the guy I was like a few years ago? Like I'm just a fucking bum. A lot of the times, like I'm laying in bed, like longer than I should fucking be. And like looking a lot at your of these, phone and yeah, stuff. You know what I mean? Shit like and, that. Yeah. Just like 
looking for excuses to not get shit done. And now I'm like, it's on a different phone. It's on a worse phone, which is cool because it doesn't load great like this one. You know, right, I mean? right, right. And everything I like, like, like I'll hit something and, and you know, I'll have a few seconds where I'm like, why am I doing this? I get to think <laughs> instead of letting it kind of autopilot me. Right. You know what I mean? And let it play off of like my fucking dopamine receptors. And right, shit. You know, right, that's right, right. That's, that's, the whole thing's a casino. Right. Um, mm-hmm. Pretty much. Definitely. Yeah. Uh, if, if you guys want, uh, I definitely recommend The Social Dilemma and check out the video I just dropped. It's on YouTube and it's on my Instagram. And I'll, I'll send it to you. It's I've watched. Worth, worth watching. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Social Dilemma. Is that the documentary? It is a documentary. Oh, okay. So yeah, on yeah. Netflix, right? Yeah, yeah. I have seen that. Yeah. Then. I thought you meant the, the social network. Oh, no. <laughs> dude, yeah. I was like, oh, he wants me to watch yeah. that? All right, dude. Nah, that's, I heard that was a good like, movie, I guess. Uh, nah, <laughs> no, that was a fantastic documentary. Yeah. It's some scary shit. Dude, it is very scary, man. It, it's uh, you wonder if it's real just... world concerns. It, yeah, it's, yes. it's one of those things where I had to explain to people. It's like, just because you don't care about these things doesn't mean it doesn't matter. Right. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, there are yeah. People, that's, a lot of people have a hard time. A lot, a lot of people have a hard time coming to terms with that, man. Yeah, like, seriously. They just, they just can't grasp that thought process. Have, have you ever, have you ever heard this quote? It goes, um, just because, or you, people will say they don't, uh, they don't care about the right to f- the freedom of privacy because they have nothing to hide. But that's the same thing as saying, like, uh, you don't care about the freedom of speech because you have nothing to say. You yeah. I mean? Okay. Yeah. I think I've heard something similar to that. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, well, there's a lot of people that just don't, they're just regular ass people though. They got that, they s- that small town fucking yeah, syndrome. They don't yeah, know. No, they don't have any no co- aspirations. concept of what the fucking world is. Yeah. yeah yep. man. Like what is, what is going on yeah, out there? And that there. just fuels that. Unfortunately, there's more people like that than not. Yeah. You know, and that's only getting worse as we progress I, I feel like as we're progressing it's like more people are getting more complacent i feel like very it, it, strange it's, it's the same way i kind of feel about like racism right it it's not that it's getting worse i think it's that we're seeing it more now yeah because it, it, we, we can see it our access At, to information and sharing information is we've never had anything like this where this is this is a huge deal we are uh, we have not adjusted as like a human species yet to the amount of shit coming yeah, in all exactly. the time. They, like, they, how do you adjust to they, that? They touch, they touch on it so perfectly in that. And, and yep. it's, the, the thing about the social dilemma, in my opinion, and I'm, I'm, we're probably like boring these people, so like maybe we can end the sentiments here. <laughs> but the main thing about why that documentary is so good is the people that made it are the ones who made these apps. Yeah. They're the ones who invented fucking Facebook. Like, yeah. they're the developers and shit. They're like, yo, they're, we created a monster. We need to address this shit. Right, right, right. Uh-huh. That's really cool that that's a, that's a thing. I'm, I'm not going to lie. I didn't have <clears throat> social media before before I started, like, the GGL. I think it was, like, yeah. 2016. I think I made my Facebook right around then and my Instagram, I think, not too long before that. I think I had it, but I didn't use it kind of a thing. Yeah. Um, and then I realized how awesome of a marketing tool it could be. Yeah, and it, and it is, man. And that, that's one of the things kind of I touched on is I need these things. If yes. I'm going to be a content creator, I need to have them. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to give them my fucking address book, though. Right, right, you know right. I mean? right. I'm not going to give them access to my network and, and all these other things that they're capable it's, of. It's scary. <clears throat> it's scary hearing the claims of the things that they can do and that they do do regularly with the information that they're given. The little information, or so we think, is little information uh, that they're giving given from us partaking in social media sites mm. and stuff it's it blows my mind the kind of things that they can come up with and and f- like formulate and figure out and you know just by what they see on our <laughs> on our facebook page or whatever yeah man it, well it's <clears> crazy <throat> man they they know you better than anyone that you know knows you. yeah that's you scary know? that's a scary You're, thought they know you better than your mom knows you i don't want my son to ever go through that stuff i'm yeah. good on that you know it it, it can be it's gonna hijack their 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 minds. Like think think about like how crazy you were going through puberty. Right? Yeah, you, have a social you know media. I mean? you, were just, you were just like a boner <laughs> walking around touching right. stuff. You know what I mean? like, that's, uh, they're they're so susceptible to things, and I don't. I'm I'm worried about that myself. But yeah. anyway, that that was an awesome tangent. There's some videos I have on that on the channel. You guys can check that out. Let's so get good. back to fighting. Would yeah. you ever do a street beefs? A street beef? Yeah. Oh my god! <laughs> my brother is going to love this. I love the fact that you just answered that or asked me that. My brother is a, he watches so much street beef. It's, <laughs> it's ridiculous. So good, my brother is getting a, a master's in like 
politics, um, creative writing, and philosophy. Uh, he's one of the smartest people I know. He's one of the people I learn most from at this age. It's funny. He's my little brother. Yeah. <clears throat> and I've had him for a long time, too. And and he's lived with me for a while when he's not in school, pretty much since he could have that choice. He's like 15 years old, right? And uh, <clears throat> he <laughs> he uh, he puts on a lot of street beef videos when we're just like hanging out in the basement and mm -hmm. stuff. And he's doing like his work and all that. And I'm he's working on my on, shit. Yeah. He puts that on the YouTube. We get we get into watching these things for so long do you have and a they, favorite they're all guy? awful no i don't even remember <laughs> you know, he's like, they're awful the dude they're all so <laughs> terrible right and uh and he wants so bad to like message them and be like we want to get this guy on your on your street piece like, like get you on there <laughs> yeah, so stupid, would you do it <laughs> no I, I mean well shit no. if they paid me a lot of money then of or if they what's paid a me, lot of money if they paid me money then i would definitely do it how much me, like money? 20 bucks I don't know. and they'll fly you down <laughs> no i don't know about that I, I, <laughs> i'm gonna be making piece. my pro pro debut here this year so yeah. i i know uh, i got i, know I, I gotta words. get like all right so realistically if street beefs wanted me to be on one of their shows i would probably be like you know two and two 2000 and 2000 2000 the show 2000 if i win you know and uh then then we could do it otherwise no nah, my, my man knows his price <laughs> I, I love it man let's go yeah because that's, that's awesome. a that's a hit to your uh to your reputation though yeah definitely you, know, is, you don't want to be the, the mma fighter that went work. and killed some poor uh street beefs fighter <laughs> <laughs> so oh god oh man it's funny they have some guys on there mike was on there who? Cool Rack. Cool. Like Brock Sean. What? Yeah. Mike he, was on he, Street Beast. He fucked somebody up, dude. Yeah. Get the fuck out of yeah. here. I didn't know it's, that. It, That's yeah. so funny. It's on his Instagram. You can look at it. Yeah, <laughs> what? Dude. Fuck yeah, dude. Go follow what? Mike Rockshawn, guys. Oh, fuck my yeah, God. My, of course Mike did. Yeah. That kid is awesome. That dude, kid, it doesn't surprise him, me at bro. all. Dude, like, actually. I had so much fun with him on my show, dude. <laughs> we were just, like, he, he like, uh, he's super into metal. And, like, I'm, I was in, like, a metal band, like, before I'm in, like, the Celtic one that I'm now to. We were fucking just talking about it. Like, oh, it's so fucking so fucking funny he's a he's a he's, he's a, a character, character man he was he, uh, when i was in puerto rico he was down there too oh dude, so, that's awesome yeah i uh i got to hang out with him for a little bit while i was down there he's he's funny as hell man he is yeah. definitely a funny ass kid yeah I'm, I'm hoping uh i'm hoping to work with uh with mike on some uh on an instructional he wants to put together actually oh okay yeah man he's nice. he's, he's, he's got some really cool stuff coming along too it's, it's so yeah cool, he's man. a hard worker he's I a hard worker he's a grinder scene, like the, the scene here is so, like the tri-state area there's so much of this shit everywhere i'm like dude it's look common, at all this dude. ambition my yeah. god can yeah. i have some well think about think about this think about <clears throat> what i mean listen i keep going back to finishers but think about what they started when they started doing their finishers opens and uh their finisher attorneys as regularly as they were and and before the covid bullshit right <clears throat> and um uh the kind of scene that they really started they really started it they yeah. really really started i say that i'm not just blown i'm not trying to blow smoke up their ass or whatever um when i say these things like they really are the pioneers on the east coast because ebi that that was a thing right but it didn't feel as real to us on uh, uh, any smaller competitors or even like like mid-level competitors you know it was like it was a very it was a strange thing the thought of getting on an ebi um for a while you know and especially as it developed too you know and it was mostly showcasing guys on the West Coast. Yeah. There wasn't really a whole lot of people on the East Coast except for the studs that were coming in. <clears throat> yeah, like flying in. <clears throat> right, exactly. Like the people who ended up winning them anyways, you know. And, uh, <clears throat> and then finishers really changed that, really changed that. And they kind of opened the door for everybody else to do it, not only do it well and do it right, but um, they facil facilitated – the growth of the entirety of the scene as well they would share the other promotions and they you know what i mean they supported all the other shows and stuff including mine you know um so i uh, i think that uh i think that the east coast and like the new england area this tri-state area especially <clears throat> um now it's we're seeing the effects of of a scene being built you know what I mean? A scene being strengthened up and built 
really a no gi scene, really like a sub only scene. Yeah, I think it affected it's the, like the American jiu jitsu. You know, yeah, I, mean? I guess you would say like that. I'm not. I don't really care. American jiu jitsu, yeah. uh, Brazilian jiu jitsu. It doesn't. It really seems like that. That mean label is kind of synonymous with what you're describing, though. Like as it's yeah. been described to me. Yeah, know, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. I'm not um, the guy that came up with it. I guess you could say that. Yeah. Um, I, uh, I, I, I really think that competition. You know, I hate to fall, and it's not just because I'm a competitor. You know, I think that really does facilitate. Obviously, it's super important to facilitate your growth inside your gym. It's really important, right? But if you want growth as a whole in the area, and if you want the longevity of the sport to be strong, right? The the, the do you want it to? Do you want like a good lo- longevity? Uh, um, you know, of, of 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 a strong support from the sport. Um, then competition, I think, is really important. And, uh, yeah, they kind of started that shit, man. Yeah. You know, they, they, even though EBI was doing it, you know, like I said, they really did, you know, they really did start it and make it different. They made it like a thing, a real thing for us out here. Not yeah. only for other shows to start putting on their own stuff, but for com- competitors as well. Yeah. And that, when you have a stage, when you have <clears throat> the ability, th- that kind of support, you know, yeah. a spotlight, right? Then you can get yourself out there and, and the spotlight wasn't just on those top guys anymore. They're on the up and comers too. And you watched these shows help develop all these guys and now they're opening up gyms and now they're you know, they're they're traveling and training with all these teams and they're fighting MMA and they're, you know, running their own promotions and, you know, that's good. That's what you want. You know, it really did start with um it did become real. Finish uh, Sapatero too. I keep saying finishers too, but you can't you can't disclude Sapatero. Josh mm-hmm. Leduc, what he did, um, as well. Obviously, you know he yeah. put on some huge shows in the beginning. Um, he's another pioneer. You know, I I think that uh, a lot of these a lot of these like a lot of these really these shows early in their in their in their infancy could learn a lot from exactly how they did things and how they treated their people and the priorities. Uh, their their priorities, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, definitely, man. <clears throat> Which is what I tried to do when I went out and I'd compete on all these other shows. You know, I tried to take all of this stuff in, not just as a competitor, but also as a spectator and uh, a fellow promoter. You know? Yeah. Well, you kind of can take notes, right? Like, logically, you're like, ah, oh, yeah, I see how they're course. doing that. That's really wise. Like, that's yep. not something you see commonly kind of thing. Yep. I definitely do the same thing. Like, it's it's funny because I wasn't filming sports for a long time. And then once I got into it, I, I used to hate watching, like, football. But now, like, when I watch, like, any sport on TV, like, even, like, the Super Bowl, I'm like, ah, oh, interesting how they're getting these angles. Yeah, you right, know what right, I mean? right. Like, yeah, so my brother's really into film. Until then. Yeah. Right, right, right. Yeah. So he, he's... I'm excited he's, to get him uh, yeah. popping with, with, with the group here. Yeah, 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 and, uh, for sure. For, for the <clears> he's, he's, he's going to make movies one day. Mm-hmm. He's going to be a filmmaker. He will be successful at it. Kids well, just, if he needs some extras, I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's very good at what he does, like, and he's an extremely smart and a very creative person as well. Yeah. Um, and uh, I'm excited for his future and, and this stuff. But um, that's uh, that's how he, I mean, every time we watch a movie, like it's not like you see a lot of people watching a movie. Oh, it was a good movie. And, oh, it was great. No, sometimes we're stopping it halfway through, a quarter way through. Mm-hmm. And, okay, what the hell is, you know what I mean? Yeah. Why, why would they shoot it like the blah, 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 this and that? If they just did this, oh, this person's a terrible, you know? Oh, <laughs> so we go through and we just, we do so much of uh, all the time, actually. Kind of thing, so yeah. much of it, right? And I can just see him soaking all of the stuff in, too. And it's the same thing with anything. Yeah. We all do it. We all do it yeah. with what we do, right? Well, it's funny, like, what, what you said specifically, right? I... I because of my background in in IT and networking and everything that I that I did, um, I recently watched uh, the social dilemma with a friend of mine, and we were pausing it whenever like she was she had a question. I was like, "All right, we're gonna let's have a discussion about this." Like, right. Like, yeah. Anytime you have a comment, this is what like, we do a lot. You know what I mean? Exactly. Like, that's yeah. why like I never <laughs> right. used to do that till like till recently, and I'm like, this is a really cool way to to watch this because yeah, man, I, it's gonna be a way more productive use of the time. Like. Like she was like saying like, ah, that's not real. Like that's like one of the things she said is that's correlation, not causation. I'm like, but what can you give an example of yeah. what, what it could have been Elaborate. differently right. then? You right. know what I mean? It right, right, right. Good. Absolutely. It makes a world yeah. of difference. It's good for everybody expect- learning, learning wise. Right. Hell I yeah. think that's the difference. <clears throat> 
between learning out of a book and in real life, you know. Hell yeah. Man. I think that life experience and, and, and getting out there and doing the things and being a part of other people doing the things that you want to do is how you really learn how to get. Like, so, so anybody could do what I did putting on a show, right? But I wouldn't have had a good grasp of what to do if I wasn't on the shows myself. Mm, you know what I mean? Of course, yeah. I, I just wouldn't have, one, I wouldn't have had the confidence in it because I'm not a gambler. <laughs> I absolutely am not a gambler. Like, I know this will be successful and that's why I'm doing it. If I didn't think that it was going to be very successful or if there was a chance of it being successful, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't do it. Yeah. It's just, I'm not a gambler. I won't do that. I never have been and I never will be, you know? And, uh, and um, I think that that, I think that, I think that's probably, I think that's probably the driving force to, I know that it's going to be successful and that's kind of why I decided to, to put the show on, you know, awesome, it was really man. probably like the motivating, motivating force because I knew I had acquired that experience and yeah. stuff, you know, and I, I'm hoping like for my brother, like I hope that, you know, that comes from the same thing, like the watching, watching the movies and going to the premieres and like really, truly analyzing the stuff, talking to his professors and all that. Mm -hmm. And with you, like <clears throat> working with other experienced guys, you know, uh, um, filming more events, figuring yeah, things I, out because you're I'm, always going to fuck up and get better. I'm a huge guy for taking people under my wing too because <clears throat> I, I'm very grateful for, like, you know, we were having conversations moments ago, like everyone along the way who's given me resources to build the connections and the skills that I have, man, I'll always tell people, like, I'm very grateful that this person came along even if, you know, even if maybe we're, we don't get along now, like I give credit <clears throat> words to you every, every time, man. Every Absolutely. Time. Absolutely. Yeah, I try to make sure I do that the best mm -hmm. I can. Yeah. Everybody I can remember. Yeah, everyone <laughs> like when, remember, right? when people, uh, whenever anybody asks me, oh, where'd you train or where did you learn? It's such a hard question for me because I've learned yeah, from so like many so people. So many people, yeah. It's like, uh, man. I, I can attribute so <laughs> let much. Me, let me send you an email. Honey. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I've, uh, I, can, I can attribute different pieces of my game to different people. So Yeah, I feel the Most same of them way, under man. the same umbrella, under the mm -hmm. same roof, to be honest with you. But... Um, yeah, it's just like a slew of people that I've been lucky enough and fortunate enough um, to be able to work with and learn from over the years. I'm not especially gifted physically, and I don't have a great situation to train in regularly. So any of the skills or um, any of the appearance that I'm good, you know, it's it's because of it's because of the experience I got with working with so many people, you know, yeah. training with so many good people, you know. So, I mean, I think, like I said, I think that's just like anything. Yeah. You, know, you got to do it to get good at it. For sure. Oh, that's know? awesome. Otherwise, man. you're just thinking about doing it. You don't use it, you lose it. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Something like that, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. All right. So let me let me ask you a, a, a couple of questions here about like your uh, competitive stuff. So, is there um, is there a match you would love to do again? Like, is there a rematch oh. you wish you could do? Oh boy. Um. I've only lost a handful of matches, you know. I've got over a hundred matches. I only got a few losses. Um, it's so funny. Everyone, everyone losses. always talks about their losses. No one ever wants to run back a win. Yeah, you nobody wants. Right? Like, oh, I don't want to well, that mean, guy that's, again. That's not true. I, 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 uh, I. Uh, there's, there's a few guys that I had really, really, really good matches with that, mm -hmm. that Just uh, I won. Yeah. Yeah. Like Eric, actually, Eric Naples, I've been talking to him for a year now about doing another match and Eric, really man. been holding out. We've been holding out for Rise Invitational. Mm -hmm. He, for some reason, hasn't gotten on Rise Invitational yet, and I feel like that would be a really easy way to get him on. And also, you know, it's fun. I mean, that's always a fun match. Yeah. I know it'll be a fun match. Yeah. And I, I like fun pants, matches, man. Like he, he's he's making yeah. moves. Yeah. We had a match uh, a couple of years ago, and mm -hmm. I I leg locked him. And um, he, we've talked multiple times, like I said, about having a rematch. And he's accomplished so much since then. It would be wicked shitty of me to be like, no, I already beat you. Like, yeah, yeah. You know, like, clearly a much better competitor than he was then. Not that he was bad, mm -hmm. but um, but yeah, I. Like that's one guy I've beaten that I would do another match with. It was a yeah. lot of fun too. You know? If there's one that you could do again, though. What would yeah. You do? Oh, okay. Uh, oh, man, that that last I still oh it's like it's still just yeah burning me up. Is the my last match on fight to win mm -hmm. is I just thought it was the worst judging. Oh, it just went to ref terrible, decision. Terrible judging. And and granted, it's was my it own fault for not was finishing. Was it a two-one split decision? Uh, yeah, yeah, it Damn. was. Yeah, those and are, uh, those are rough. And, and uh, who was it against? <laughs> Um, Grant, I can't even remember his last name. I think I, I don't Grant something. Mm -hmm. I can't remember. Um, I'd have to look. Remember, at, <laughs> so I was supposed to. I, I was so butthurt about it that. <laughs> I 
I, I'm always real about her after, you know, <laughs> you know how it goes. Dude, I do. He's, I know, I know all too well. I was like, <laughs> I was like, I messaged like Chris Chigoli from Sogi. Yeah, yeah. I was like, I want a bat match with that kid. Like, I was like, I don't care how much money I put a thousand, five thousand. I don't give a shit. 5, like, I, well, I'm, I'm dead serious. I'm I'll do it on street beefs. I don't care. Dude, I, I am. <laughs> I, sure, sure. I'd love that. Like, that'd be great. I, that would be great. Um, <laughs> but, uh. I, I was like, no time limit, sub only, no bullshit, like, yeah. no time limit. No hay bales. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> right? Uh, it would just be us, the whole gym, right? I did it with um, Dylan Graflo, like, a year ago. We oh, had, yeah, like, yeah. a $1,000 bet match. Ended up going 94 minutes. And, yeah, it was definitely the most fun I've ever had, had in a match. I have so much respect for that kid, and he's gotten. It's another guy. It wasn't even a year ago, I don't think. Maybe, maybe it was a year ago. Um, but he has gotten so much better since then. He just... Smoke Jay Sh- or Joe Schilling at High Rollers, man. Yeah, <laughs> no pun intended. Yeah, really. <laughs> uh, but um, it's like I missed something. He's here. like, Let's wait, what? Backlog, backlog. Oh, no, no. Uh, and uh, and um, that was a lot of fun, dude. Like, there's another match I would do again. I'm mean, granted he's getting bigger and he was kind of higher than my weight at the time, too. Um, so. Not one I would go out of my way for, but he's just, he's so good. He, if he really wanted it, he deserves it, you know. I would be an asshole to say no that he didn't, you know. He's killing it. But um, so maybe eventually, eventually down the line, we could do that. But as for, like, a loss, definitely that Grant kid. I, I wish I, it starts with a K. Yeah. I want to say Kidder, but I know that's not it. Yeah. <laughs> I just seem like an asshole, you know. Yeah, whatever. Uh, and, uh, I'm, I mean, I'm extremely confident I would... I'd win that, but it would be a good, fun match, anyways. It was a fun match, the one that we had. Mm-hmm. And I got respect for the guy. I just, yeah, I feel like I definitely won, and I yeah. really dislike the decision. You want to so, run back, <laughs> and I'm really competitive, <laughs> so I really hate that, and it yeah. just tears my stomach up. So yeah. I actually haven't competed since then. I don't think, maybe I have. I don't think I have though. Mm-hmm. Um, it was the last fight to win I got, and after that, I kind of just like they kind of stopped answering me. We're like, yeah, we'll get you on, and yeah. I was like, shit, man, I get screwed out of a terrible decision, and then um, now I can't get on the damn shit, you know? Yeah. I actually really like competing on that stage, even though they don't pay you or anything like that. And, like, I sold some tickets, and I sold some tickets. The guy's like, uh, Seth's like, no, no, you didn't sell any tickets. So I was like, no, whatever, and I left. And then I found out afterwards there was, like, six tickets I sold. And uh, so I was kind of bummed out about that a a little bit. Yeah. You know, you don't make any money. You're definitely spending money competing for that show for yeah. sure. Just like IBJJF or anybody else, to be honest with you. You know, it's just the same as, you know, when you have to fly and you have to travel and you have to do all these things as, as competing for any open tournament and stuff, too. It's just way cooler. The format, what they provide for you, the um, the marketing and stuff. Like, yeah. It's way cooler. They offer way more on that front. So it's a pretty easy decision. What was your walkout song for your last fight? Oh, for my last fight. Oh, Let's see. The first one uh, for on fight to win was oh the first one was oh uh, it was you never can tell by uh, uh, it was that's the, on the pulp, pulp Fiction soundtrack uh, Jesus I can't go uh, I feel like the yeah. uh, dingus for not it's, I got it on like a bunch of my playlists an old really old song yeah. Um, as you know, the Pulp Fiction and yeah, the scene yeah, when they're dancing, yeah, right? Say la vie, say the old mm-hmm. folks. He goes to show. Well, that's that's the one. And uh, and then the next one I had, uh, I had a match with Cam, uh, Cam Mellet, stud for the fight to win title, and um, I I came out to Bo Diddley's uh, "I'm a Man." <laughs> it's a good old blues song. And yeah, then, dude. Then the th- oh, it was Chuck Berry. That's what it was. Chuck Berry. Uh, you, you, you never can tell. That was it. Oh, yeah, Pretty yeah, sure yeah. You're, like, you're right. You're right. Uh, hopefully I'm right. I just right. I didn't just sound like a complete idiot. I feel like you're right. I know Chuck Berry. I love Chuck Berry. <laughs> I was just watching Back to the Future. No, I, I, like, I, I have to check it mm-hmm. now. But, and then. We're both retards. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So um, uh, in the third match. I, c- I couldn't tell you right now to be mm-hmm. honest with you the one what, with what's Grant it, what's it gonna be so for many the next of them one? right what's the, what's gonna, what's your next walk oh, I don't even know how man. do you pick what how do you, how do you decide you decide the day of yeah usually the day of or day before 
I like a good, I like it to sound good walking out. You know what I mean? Like you got these guys that are like, oh, I really like the song. They put it on and it has like some long intro and you don't even get to the yeah. song. I always think that's really funny. Right. Um, and I, I'm like, you know, I want people to be like, Oh cool. It's good song. Good. Uh, good. Um, good, uh, entrance. You know what I mean? A cool, cool entrance and stuff. Like, uh, it's, uh, it's appealing, you know, people remember those guys and those performances stand, might stand out a little bit, a little bit more than, than the others. So, you know, I think it's, it's always a good idea. Uh, for my MMA fights, I think I came out to Deftones for pretty much every fight, except for one fight I came out to like Bass Nectar, I think. Mm. A Bass Nectar song, yeah, uh, Ba Ba cool. Boom. I was much younger then. <laughs> yeah, dude, Bass Nectar's awesome, man. It's, it's from my, this, like I can tell, I can tell we're like, similar age well the chuck berry stuff i can just tell you have class for that yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> i have a very and stuff. my musical taste is all over the place i like yeah. everything from like the 50s like ballroom stuff i like um 60s 70s 80s you know i mean really all of it I'll go through all of the yeah, dude. time frames oh, I, I like all it all so yeah so, so. Uh, what what are some things you do besides like martial arts and stuff? Like, <laughs> what what are some hobbies that you have? Dad, on this? was that your dad. dad? Yeah, I'm like dog dad, and I'm a dad dad. Yeah, and uh, what's your that's kid's it, favorite man. video game? That's it. Oh Jesus, anything with Mario. Oh He's, yeah, it depends on the week, man. That's um, funny. I got him that Mario Kart Live for oh, for nice, Christmas. Nice, nice. Does he play uh, Smash Bros? Uh, yeah, 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 of got, course. He's, he's got, so yeah. good at Smash Brothers. Now he's better than me at Smash Brothers. All right, so check this out. I My son is, uh, I'm, I'm going to have to show him this clip later because he almost beat me. He just picked <laughs> up He just picked up my, like, I used to play competitive Smash Brothers. Oh, I no used shit. to put on, like, you know, <laughs> okay. the Emerald City Invitational. I had the Let Me Smash competition series. <laughs> Let Me yeah, Smash? Yeah, that, we, that's like, real we, funny. We the whole thing. Like, it's on Twitch. It's uh, Hero and the Bard. Nice. Uh, that's awesome. Long story. But I used to play, right, uh, like, competitive Smash and... I played Dark Pit, and my son just picked him up. And I'm, I showed him all my tricks, and he greased me up last time I played. <laughs> That's awesome, like, dude. He almost beat me, got me down to one stock. I'm like, oh, right, see, now my right. son's, like, kicking my ass and pretty much everything. <laughs> Street Fighter and Mortal Kombat, I, I'll, hold, oh, those, I'll those, hold my crown with them. Yeah, let's right. go. But, Who do you uh, play in Street Fighter? Oh, all of them. I can play with pretty uh, – Street Fighter 2, man, I played it for so long. I yeah. remember when that came out. Like, I, yeah, hell yeah. You know, that was, that was, like, the shit when I was really little. Yeah. You know? But uh, you play, who's your favorite character though? Oh Jesus, I don't know. Between I don't know. I live really like Vega. Saga's yeah, really cool. Yeah, Vega. Cool. Damn, dude, Saga's you must really actually cool. be good. <laughs> yeah, and uh, um, just classic Ken or Ryu. They're always yeah. solid characters to yeah. play with. You know, I didn't play a lot of the newer ones, but yeah, they're, they're not so different. I have, my yeah. son has a Street Fighter Two arcade machine that I got him actually. Oh it's, wow, dude, yeah, like a really whole cool. cabinet. It's a it's a yeah. It's got a cabinet. Um, it's got the cabinet and everything. And I'm gonna get him the. Turtles in Time. That's my next one. Dude, I get them. the first game, my son, like we, the arcade near my hometown, uh, they were doing like a lock in. Like it was like, you know, it was open from like, I don't know, 8 p.m. to like 2 a.m. or something. Oh, that's cool. I've seen those. I've yeah, seen like dude. bowling alleys the, and the shit first, too before. The first game I ever beat with my son was Turtles in Time. Oh, that's super yeah, cool. Dude. That's super cool. Or it was one of the Ninja Turtle games. I don't know if it was Turtles in Time. He has like a it was deep. One of them. Oh, all of them are good. Yeah. Uh, he has like a deep appreciation for like older video the games. The classics, right? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. My son my son's loves Very Mega cool. Man. Yeah. Loves retro stuff, man. Yeah. yeah. If, if Gotta you Gotta raise him right. <laughs> yeah, right? If you would have asked, like, if you would have asked him when he was like five or six years old what his favorite band of was he would go like arctic monkeys and oh, now shit. it's like now it's he's all over the spectrum i mean ever since he saw guardians and heard that soundtrack now he's super into older music what? and stuff That's too crazy yeah so he has my son on that I, there's like maybe a couple pop songs or something that he knows yeah or has heard you know but he has all his interests in the old stuff which yeah. is super awesome you know yeah makes me really easy for me and him to like relate yeah on things you know because <laughs> awesome, he's just becoming yeah. a little me <laughs> so That's awesome. which is yeah it's awesome for me to see obviously yeah. it's like easy for you right? yeah yeah it's super easy <laughs> my, my son's got a pretty eclectic taste like he's really into like uh electronic music which i'm not cool. not into but like when he throws like a video game like soundtrack on i'm like all right we can play yeah this. yeah you know what i mean but some of the dubstep stuff it sounds like a fax machine falling down the stairs i'm like i don't yeah. know i can't can't, yeah, I can't can't i can't get into this too much can't I, I like some of it but i i have i have a, a fine line i draw where i'm just like ah yeah. that's not doing this sorry yeah, buddy <laughs> i'll be like damien this is awful what you? <laughs> but he'll be like he'll say that and be like oh dad what are you listening to to something yeah I'm listening right to he's, too, just, so. he's just spiteful coming <laughs> yeah. back at you <laughs> yeah yeah i don't like i don't whatever this is i don't no he'll just be honest he's like i don't want i don't know what yeah, this is but i don't like it that's like, funny. <laughs> he has no problem telling me that it's it's so funny because you see 
like a lot of kids they idolize their dad it's like their superhero right yeah man. and uh with oh, i can imagine for <laughs> with, you my god well with with damien i never like he didn't even know i fought or anything like that until just a few years ago that hasn't funny. been that long and uh and uh then he found out like his mom fights MMA or fought MMA and his, his dad fights MMA and does competes in jujitsu and shit, this and that. And then he started coming into the gym and being in there all the time, all the time. So now he's oh, just sucked right in. Yeah. Right? He's just sucked right in and, um, and, uh, um, big wrestling fan. He's not as into jujitsu yet. Um, he does it here and there with me and stuff, you know, knows more jujitsu than the average 10 year old, yeah. but, uh, um, big fan of wrestling. Um, and he's coming along learning, under uh gene mills luckily and his his coaching staff at ultimate athletics um we're fortunate to have an awesome wrestling program in our gym too which is like a game changer having you it know? is man twice you know, a week i get to wrestle yeah. with like collegiate wrestlers and drill the same stuff yeah. they're drilling and stuff yeah you know? like d1 guys in there yeah oh yeah Damn, oh yeah dude, that, that is that remember is that a game changer there's a lot dude. of colleges right around us too yeah yeah so we get a lot of people but we have people that travel from everywhere from like buffalo like in uh, out of state that to come work with gene yeah. so we get a lot of a lot of people in the gym but yeah so i mean i just let him i let damien natural uh, that's my son yeah uh naturally um come to the stuff himself come to me and come to the stuff himself yeah it's but my son actually just got his first gi this year oh that's uh, su yeah. that's super cool it man. is awesome man uh and i've always I've always like showed him like, Hey, you know, like I do jujitsu. If you ever wanted to do it, he wrestled a little now. I think he was in a bowling last year. He's just kind of flirting and f figuring things out. Like, and I think that's really important to figure out. Like maybe he has a gift in something, right? Yeah. And of I need course. to let him naturally discover that. <clears throat> Absolutely. But let him try decide, everything. Yeah. If he, yeah, exactly. I mean, I encourage everything. I'm like, yeah, yeah dude, like I didn't he wants to do ballet. Let yeah. him do ballet. Yeah. Ten, like, ten years ago, you said, yeah, you're going to be a podcast. Tennis. Like, yeah. Whatever, yeah, dude. Yeah. What? What, is, what, what the fuck's it. a podcast? Let him find a passion yeah. and just put it into it that's an awesome idea yeah. it's a great way of thinking man yeah man 100 percent. like right now he he do, he uh he's really into <clears throat> animation it's so weird like he he it was funny because he was he has like a what do you call it the flip like the flip book thing. things yeah. oh and he was that's drawing, cool like, stuff and i'm like where'd you find this he's like there's a dude on youtube so like for for his birthday i got him like a like a nice animation pad oh thing. cool that's awesome yeah and then uh like I, I, uh, for editing my videos and stuff, I use it, the Adobe suite and oh. Adobe animates in there. Like I'm already paying for this. Like I'm going to install right. it for you. That's awesome. Yeah, so now he's like drawing that stuff, man. It's crazy. Man, it was funny because really he, cool. he, he did the first one on like a sticky note pad. And I'm like, that's <laughs> you, funny. The ones that you yeah. flip in your thumbs. Yeah, you're like, exactly. yeah, I know. I remember that. I remember like I, I used to draw stuff like in the corner <laughs> of my textbooks in school. You know that's what I mean? Funny. I'd make like a little stick figure fight. Like, that's man. awesome. That's it's awesome. So, it's so crazy, man. You gotta, you gotta foster that. Yeah, you know? I, th I, th I think I'm f like it's so funny that you say that. My my son recently, um, you know, I, he he likes this stuff. Uh, he loves the martial arts stuff and he loves wrestling and all that. But um, it's not. It's definitely not his priority. For mm -hmm. sure, not his priority. Um, he likes being around it and stuff. You know, for sure, and understands the benefits of of having it in his life. But <clears throat> he is really taking to. Oh, I apologize. It's all good, man. Uh, to drawing comic books that's awesome oh, man he started he started like replicating the captain underpants books oh that's and, so funny oh, yeah he has every single uh dog man and captain underpants book that there is um all the pilky books uh i got him and, and his mom got him <laughs> and uh um he started drawing these and i was like giving him shit i'm like dude you're just copying the ones they wanted you put your own dialogue in do your own pictures and he's like no dad that's not what i'm doing that's not what i'm doing well, I think it finally set in and yeah. one day he came to me he's like look at this one I was like oh cool which one is that and he's like well this is one I made and I was like really you know and he did his own like and it looked just as just as good as the Captain Underpants books that yeah, he had I was like funny, holy shit dude I was like this is legit like yeah. he, he, he taught himself how to draw these characters you know those books that you see with like they have the circles in them and you erase the circles and you have to do this shape to extent you know how oh, the yeah, official yeah, yeah. ways to draw to finish that, it, yeah. right, how to right well he did he did all that stuff i was like as a kid there was no way i was going through all those steps i'm just like let me see the final product i'm gonna yeah. do my best to make it look like that, that's you know? so funny man it's like 
I'm so bad at drawing. Like it, it's weird that my son's good at it because I'm so so bad at it. <laughs> I, like it's so funny. I, w- I was trying to explain like to my buddy like how like he wants to do security cameras in his house, and I'm like, oh yeah, this is how I would do it. And I'm just drawing shit, and I'm like, dude, I'm sorry that this is coming out the way it's coming out. Like you understand what I'm saying, right? Please, yeah. <laughs> you know what? I'm not gonna just put this away. I'm sorry. I, I just, just need to you draw. to stretch with me here. <laughs> Work with me here. It's like, um, like, what is that? Is that a camera? I'm like, ah, it's a. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's a cat. <laughs> I, as a kid, I loved drawing. I, I actually, I remember being a, as a teenager, uh, um, being all right at drawing. Like I remember I used to like drawing yeah. anime stuff. I wasn't, yeah, man. Super, you, you I wasn't super big into anime, yeah. but I liked Dragon Ball Z, just like most kids at, at my age then. Yeah. I liked, uh, I liked Gundam a oh, lot, you know, yeah, 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 like Cowboy Bebop and mm-hmm. like Outlaw Star. Like those are, those are like the animes that I was, was into. Classics, bro. A couple other ones that were on Cartoon Network. You know, yeah. I didn't go too deep down that rabbit hole, but I would just replicate those things. And you know, I was like, I thought I was all right back then. I uh, drew some cool stuff, but I didn't really have any aspirations to draw. And Damien just, it's all he does now. I gotta, I gotta take his little doodle, doodle pads away from him uh, during the day. I guess distracted during yeah. his yeah during his schooling and stuff. I have yeah. to snag him from. Yeah, th- think, think about like uh, I think there's probably cheap animation software or something out there. Like or, oh yeah, like I plan stuff on like it. that, man. I the, have like the drawing pads like they're USB. Yeah, check that out, man. Yeah, I I, uh, it'd we, be, a, it'd be a good investment. Yeah, 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 yeah. I have uh, for Christmas or something. You know? Yeah, <laughs> well, we we have a uh, um, uh, iPad. Pro, the, oh, the yeah. new, one of they, the newer. You can draw on those now. Oh man, yeah. you can do one so my, much. On one those of my things. buddy that does that for a living actually does it on his iPad. Yeah, and all, but also more importantly, I actually just got um, uh, uh, a, ho- a computer for the house uh, uh, for um, for uh, for the kids. Uh, what was I going to say? Oh yeah, I just got this computer, this ridiculous computer with an insane graphics card just in case insane specs brand new just for yeah. christmas um for uh for johnny and uh ended up like realizing oh shit man i could like he can use this he's really into um like graphic designing and stuff like that and like animation and, and co- like he wants to start doing coding classes and like you know oh, go down yeah, the road dude. to like making video games and dude, stuff better, too right you better jump well, on that this, wall oh stuff, yeah man. dude absolutely and he's 12 years old you play you play like minecraft Oh, oh, he's. Dude, let he, me tell you, they. they I have, don't. I've never played yeah, it before. But, but if but he likes it, dude, there's. You can get these. Look into it. It's. I'm like sure a, he has it. Whatever you, it is. Yeah. I'm well, sure. you, you, you make you make your own mods. You can. Like, it's really oh, easy. Oh, okay. To code. On the PC. Yeah, you yeah. make your own Minecraft mods and stuff, and it's huh. like a coding thing. It's a really good way to learn. Kids, I bet. Dude, right. It's the, it's the fucking way to show kids. So I feel like, um, because of the COVID, the changes that they did in the teaching, a lot, some of the stuff. I feel like they taught like a class on something like that, or at least yeah, included my, that. My son told me like he, he learned to code, and I'm like, you don't know yeah. more than I do. There's no way. <laughs> yeah. Show me, show me what you know. Yeah. And then he knows some like elementary stuff, and I'm like, all right, fair enough. Right, right, Come right. Come back to me when you know about PowerShell. You know what <laughs> I mean? Yeah, he, uh, he's, he's in like, so he's got like a fundamental understanding of yeah. what it is and how it that's, works and that's stuff. Powerful, and that's powerful, man. Yeah, absolutely, and 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 a desire to learn and actually do it. So. Uh, we plan on facilitating that for I gotta sure. Sh- I got to show you something later. Like after the show's done, I just, I just did a little, I'll show you. I'll <laughs> All right. Show you. Uh, but, uh, um, I, I, anyways, I realized on that c- computer, we could have any, there's no program out there that it couldn't run. It's that, it was that good. Of, it's yeah, that it's good of a It's that good is of it, a. Is it thick like this girl over here? He's thick, he's <laughs> thick boy. I got a big old, big old shell with the, <laughs> the, uh, um, case rather with the, mm-hmm. um, RG, the clear yeah, side the the, oh yeah the lights the whole nine yards right you can see that nice 30 70 graphics card right through the oh that damn clear you got panel, a 30 right? 70 yeah those are yeah, like yeah. fucking over a grand right now yeah well the computer Good alone like that was almost I mean, I think we we paid like fifteen hundred or something like that for the computer. That's a really good. And, oh my god, the specs on this thing are just obscene. But anyways, uh, it can run all those programs. So definitely gonna jump on that one for myself. Figure some stuff out and get better at like graphic designing and stuff. I would love um, for my son to be like my designer. Yeah, you, you know ain't kidding. I mean? That's <laughs> do this so you can help me out, please. Yeah, I will facil- I'll facilitate you. you know what I mean? yeah. I'll be your first like employer. You yeah, know? absolutely, man, absolutely. Yeah, you know, I got to awesome, I got to you got to facilitate that stuff that kind of growth, right? And the passions, right? Cuz at least for jiu-jitsu for me, this is it's everything. It's my future. 
it's the legacy I want to leave behind. It's, uh, it means so much more to me than just the thing that I do more than anything else. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Uh, so much of my life has changed in so many ways because of it. And I just, I want something like that to impact my son too. Ha for him to go all out and fall completely in love with this thing to the point to where he literally can't work for someone else and do other things he wants to, he knows this is his calling and he wants, you know what I mean? That's mm -hmm. kind of what happened with me, you know? And now it's all I want to do. And it's hard to, after you start doing it and actually making, and actually making money doing it, it's hard to then go back to a lot of other things. You know, when you realize what your time is worth and how little you have of it, you know, and especially to do this stuff. If there's a short window to do this kind of stuff. Luckily, yeah, if you man. are into like coding and these other things, it's not like you're going to be better at it at 20 than you are at 30 or 40 or 50. You know what I mean? Most likely, at least. You know? uh, I mean, there's you'd, evolution. You'd be surprised. Yeah. You, it's, it's a lot. I think it's not you, as you physically can, demanding. I sure, should say, certainly. I guess that's it really what I meant. Yeah. Like you, youth is something that's valuable in different capacities and different facets of humans. Right. Yes, like you're, absolutely. you're, you can be a wise old man. But you can't be a spry old man. This is you true. I mean? I mean, you can be a spry old man, but it it's just not the work. same as yeah. a twenty-year-old. Yeah, seriously. You know, I'm only thirty-two, and I'm already starting to feel that. Or thirty-one, I'm going to be thirty-two this year, mm -hmm. and I'm already starting to feel that. Yeah, <laughs> it's uh, things are just different than they were just a few years ago. Yeah, started feeling it at twenty-eight. That's yeah. when I realized, oh shit, I'm just not healing up the same way as yeah, I was. Yeah, and now I just don't heal. Yeah. Like, now it's just like shoot. now I just have to deal with yeah, this. Yeah, Louis CK did this awesome <laughs> joke actually what? about his ankle That's body. He, went, so he went to the doctors and he's like, "All right, doc, what, oh, twist my, my ankle." He's like, "Oh yeah, you got a shitty ankle now. You yeah. got to do these stretches." <laughs> See all this? Hour. It's just he's shitty like, now. Okay, so if I stretch and I do these things for an hour every day, it'll get better. No, it's like you it's just, just do shitty. that. Now. So what does it do? It just maintains it, <laughs> like so it doesn't get even shittier. Yeah. You just, and you just have a shit ankle now. <laughs> like it's just how it goes, right? <laughs> it's kind of how. I fucking love that. It's kind of how I feel with it. <laughs> he, I was just listening to him like uh, a couple of nights ago. Man, he's he's got some fucking gold. Yeah, some gold yeah, out there, absolutely. Dude. It's unfortunate what happened with him. Uh, I. Uh, it's so it's honestly like a weird thing that happened with him right it's very he, weird I, he I didn't he didn't rape anyone or anything he just jerked off in front of somebody or something yeah i don't really yeah. know the whole backstory but i it's like, so that is my under i don't i obviously i have no i don't really know but f yeah. from what i heard from like social media and twitter and whatever blah 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 yeah he he was like hey guys i'm gonna do this thing yeah you're welcome to leave if you want yeah but i'm gonna do it so <laughs> So, oh you're not leaving yeah. okay well i'm gonna do this thing and Dude, they didn't I, leave and then i guess a couple years later a few yeah. years later they both decided to come out about it or yeah, something man. like that so i mean well, for sure don't do yeah. that how are you but gonna dude, especially like, in for, that kind of public me, like, eye put yourself like, in that situation i have, I have stories from like back when i was in the army that are way worse I can than imagine. like what he did and it's like dude like you couldn't just that's left the room scary. like what was did he lock the door no yeah, like, no i don't know like and you know like i don't know it's the, all weird some of these I other motherfuckers did like the one scene dude like that fucking was raping people and like oh know, that's music. a whole yeah like, that's, that's a whole other up, thing 100 percent. but dude come on man like like some fucking crazy yeah, cabal like i have fucking practical jokers that'll pull their dick out and like ah i'm like ah what's up man yeah but you college buddies that are just can't do those that around certain people though that's the thing certain people you know and <laughs> for good reason like th those yeah. people i don't let them around my kid or anything. yeah you know you're know fucking I mean? right dude. <laughs> but it's at the same time like you should know like oh yeah like we, oh. we, we can't go around anthony you know what i mean dude like, i had this shit bag roommate <laughs> when i when i was when uh my son was young like really young and he would come home wasted and like just yell and say and do these ridiculous obscene things and it was always like a fear that that when he's older and he actually knows like there's just there's gonna be influences like that in his life and that was just gonna make him shitty. Like, yeah. You know what I mean? So I've gone so far out of my way to make sure all the influences in his life are yeah, are like good, you yeah. know, positive, you know. Yeah, that's good, man. I, I feel like that that's a big thing too. Like like to to your point that you're the superhero to your son, you know. You, I hope so. His mom to, is the real superhero, yeah. to be honest. His mom, <laughs> he is absolutely dead serious and like, oh my mom's Wonder Woman. Oh that's cute. He's like, no. My mom is Wonder Woman. You don't understand. He's 10 years old and he's still adamant. No, yeah. my mom is Wonder Woman. He dead set, dead serious 
uh, says it to his teachers at school and they're like, OK, all right. You know, he, he really thinks mom's a superhero and she's an amazing mom and uh, is a competitor and all that, too. So he has this awesome influence from her as well. I got yeah. very lucky on that front. <clears throat> she's very motivated and everything, you know, and um, and like that's his other influence, too. So he sees her as a superhero. Me, I, I would like to think he sees me as a superhero. I, I would like to say that he would say the same as well. Yeah. Um, so. As long as they have those influences, man, and you also, you are there to facilitate the growth and you are there to support um, the passions and stuff and and remind them, you know, sometimes you need to give them a a smack on the back of the head, you know, metaphorically. (laughs) Um, And sometimes you need to, you know, give him a hug when he needs it, you know, Mm -hmm. and and it's stupid to think otherwise. You know, I think it's just wrong to think otherwise. As long as you do that, your kid's going to follow, whether it be in the same thing that you do, if you are a motivated person, you know, he's going to see you putting in and getting out what you put in, right? And he's going to do the same. Exactly. They're, we're he creatures see, of habit, He can right? see what works. Exactly. Yeah, yeah influence is habit. best. Yeah, influence is best. Yeah. When you lead by example, Monkey this goes from in a gym. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. And when you lead by example, and this goes for a gym and being a parent, um, then uh, when you lead by example, then you're setting the best, like, pretense and giving them the best influence. You know what I mean? They have... They understand, oh, this is, they have a direct recipe and can see in front of their face a res- like how success works, you know? Mm-hmm. So I think that's really important to instill on your kid. I really do. Hell yeah, man. I really do. Well, brother, we're creeping up on like two and a half hours oh, here. Oh, wow. See, I could do this for forever. Yeah. Oh, I know, bro. I fucking love it, man. <laughs> well, we're going to do another one fun. here soon. You're going to come up to UA, Ultimate right, Athletics? Yeah, man. We're going to have a good time, man. Maybe I'll have my spot open and we'll be able to do that in there before we'll i have up. people we'll and all that up. but early March. either way either way uh i'll bring you over to ultimate athletics too because those like i said that's where i train now it's where i'm teaching now and uh um it's those are all really good friends of mine um, awesome man. <coughs> i'm excited well dude, yeah, do you so. want to do you want to give any uh final shout outs here any any final sentiments advice for anybody oh uh if you want to do something just do it like the whole Shia LaBeouf, just fucking do it, right? You just, just do it. it. Yeah. Dude. Yesterday, you said tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> What's today? So fucking do it, right? No, for, for real, though, if, if you want to do something, do it, you know? Um, don't let people tell you that you can't, I mean, and, and something that, I mean, this is definitely like a Gary V uh, regurgitation, right? Uh, uh, just another phrase that he uses, right? Uh, like, it's usually the people closest to you you know, family, friends, girlfriend, wife, whatever, that are, are putting the thoughts of, and the doubts in your head on mm. whether or not you can success at that thing or succeed in that in that thing and um, and just be aware of that kind of stuff. You don't have to cut these people out of your life, but understand that they're not the ones that make the decision yeah, in yours. Yeah, man, 100%. You know I mean? <clears throat> there's, and, a, and there's, a, there's a quote, uh, maybe, maybe you've heard this before, but uh, it goes something that I subscribe to this like totally but you, your personality is the average of the three people you spend the most time with. Yeah, oh, it's funny. I was actually going to say that earlier. Yeah. Um, you, you are the. So what I heard, I, you take the five people that you spend the most time around, and those are your big, biggest influence. You're usually like an average of the five people you most or spend the most time around. And I think that's a very fair thing to say. You surround yourself with the influences you choose to want to be like. You have to choose to want to be like that, right? And it's hard surrounding yourself with the right influences. Sometimes it takes more work. Sometimes you have to stretch a little more. Sometimes you have to do uh, services for free. Sometimes you have to, um, you know, there's there's a lot. Sometimes it's just a lot more work. It's really easy to go to the shit influences and just be shitty for a reason. It's easy f- for a reason, you know. It's if if it was hard, like. If it wasn't hard, then everybody would be doing it. You hear that all the time, right? Oh, that yeah. it really is the truth. Like most people can't can't like last around the good influences, so they don't become great themselves. Even if they expose themselves to it, they see it and they can't figure it out. They just yeah. can't do it, right? And and it's unfortunate, but <clears throat> you know, they, they don't last with it and you see what happens in the end with those people. So if you want to be great, not only do you have to surround yourself in that greatness, you have to like kind of embody it too and understand why these people are great, you know? So I think that was a big thing. It was super, a super big eye opener going down to Henzo's and seeing how they did things, how they yeah. ran the, their, their ship. Um, and uh, the dedication, dude, those drives in the morning, waking up so early to go from 
fucking the middle of New Jersey, Brunswick, right, to all the way to the city every single morning, early too, for like uh, I think like eight o'clock class, eight thirty class, and started at different times, various times, yeah. whatever. <clears throat> like leaving Henzo's, getting something to eat in the city, or bringing something with you, and just sleeping on the mats in between, and then training at noon as well until like two o'clock right two thirty, whatever it was and then we'd leave there and go all the way back to fucking brunswick um and uh or if i was staying in the city with somebody else i'd go to another spot in the city but they all train at night too they're all either lifting or they're rolling and teaching and doing all, you know what i mean that grind <clears throat> that work ethic it's not a coincidence that these guys are that successful yeah you know they and you could live it right and you could say that and use a lot of the guys at the top um in their own way, you know, uh, in, in various sports and different, you know, walks of life, um, use that same kind of fundamental belief, you know, you, you get in or you get out what you put in. Uh, a lot of people say that and they just don't really understand it. You know, yeah. um, they really put in a lot, everything for years, not for a year, not for six months, not for two years. But five years straight, four years straight, these guys were doing the same exact thing every single day. And now they live in Puerto Rico and have a following like no other and are deemed um, one of the best competitive teams in the world. You know, it's not a coincidence. You know, um, Tom is another great example. He has the biggest school. Like, I don't know. I don't I'm, I've never seen another school with his. Uh, I don't even know if the Hanzo Academy in the city has the amount of students that Tom has. Um, he's got affiliations, right? He's got a, you know, you want to be around. We t- me and him talked about this last night. He, yeah. he went off on me yeah. last night because <laughs> yeah. uh, I, I, um, my prioritization and stuff. Um, and uh, uh, if 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 you want if you want to be one thing, you need to put yourself in that situation, right? and do what's best for you for that situation. But if you want to do the, do another thing, you need to make sure that you're realizing what is best for you, like what's going to be most beneficial for you, especially when you have a really limited time, right? <clears throat> this is guy. This is a guy I'll take any advice from because he has the most successful gym around, you know? Uh, it's it's about those influences that you bring in your life, you know? It's, I, I and I, I like that average. I like that. You know that what the influence and uh, all the stuff that I learned from him, every chance I can, um, and all the little conversations we have, and me sending him like fucking ten minute voice messages and shit. He's <laughs> uh, he, in in all the shit that I'm learning, watching these other guys, like, watching like the guys in PR train. It's so weird to say the guys from the Blue Basement now they're the guys in Puerto Rico. Um, watching them train and having seen them train and how hard they train. And how committed they are to their craft over the past like few years really gave me a good sense of of how to do it right, mm-hmm. you know, and how to instill that to others eventually as well. I'm very confident that I'll have a very strong competition team. I have great people supporting. I'm going to have a couple other people teaching, and uh, um, they're going to be. It's going to be a great thing. It's going to be a great thing. We're going to have competition, a good co- competitive environment in Syracuse for the first time ever. And grappling so that's awesome man yeah man just got to surround yourself with the right people and you can get there just do your shit take chances don't <laughs> be scared to take risks especially at a young age <clears throat> yeah. don't listen to people when they tell you that you can't or, or shouldn't do it because you i mean most times they just don't they're not in the same headspace you are and if you truly feel confident that you can do something or that it'll make you happy then what the fuck do they matter like if they you know what i mean understand especially if it's coming from somebody credible right yeah understand that there are things you can learn from these these cautions that they're saying reasons not to do these things right don't be ignorant to you know the risks yeah Yeah, don't be ignorant to good advice too you know we'll be willing to take good advice don't be ignorant to the risks but uh criticism go for it too yeah 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 Yeah, you have to be able to take criticism otherwise Mm. you know if you don't if you can't work through adversity then yeah. You're, you're never going to improve anything. Yeah, yeah, you're just going to stay right where you are. And a lot of people reach like a certain level and overcome a lot of adversity and have these stories and stuff. And and then they hit a little bit of like a spot to where they feel like they have shit figured out. 
they don't need to listen to as many people or maybe oh, they yeah. are with this one person and he's got all the answers and maybe that person's like don't listen to anybody else don't do anything else. you know what i mean yeah and you see them fall into that kind of trap tunnel vision perspective. yeah yeah, yeah. you yeah. have to stay yeah. willing to stay like be willing to stay open to like an open-minded way of thinking i guess you know pretty basic oh, yeah, stuff this is stuff that we learn as kids you yeah, know what i mean dude. and all honesty if we just take this stuff and these fundamentals of life and and we and we apply them to pretty much anything that we do we can be successful you know you really do get out of these things like what you put in you know and and, and if people think that they're not yeah then they're not doing something right yeah and there is no there's no yeah, excuse. Take a step back, know. take a breath. Yes. And look at the big picture. Yes, and how you can improve. You know oh, what yeah, I mean? Yeah. If you if you're not liking how things are going with something, improve it. Nobody else is gonna do it for you. Nobody's gonna feel bad for you either. Nobody gives a shit. You know? Yeah. So that's that <laughs> there's a big message. Guess what, everybody? <laughs> Fuck nobody yeah. gives a shit. Just do your shit. Yeah. Just do it. hundred percent. <laughs> you know? All right. Sam, well, it was a riveting conversation. Thank yeah, you for always, the show, man. brother. Always. I appreciate you, man.